Yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I, I really appreciate it. Um, you and I served together at Benning, and uh, it, like I was just telling you before we hit record, you've done. You were already a badass there, and then there's so much you did after that that I lost track of, and I, it's just fascinating. I love reading. I love hearing about you know guys like you that kept excelling as you went as you went through your career. So uh, again, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, well, yeah, definitely yeah. my honor to thank you. Um, you know, I got your invite, and uh, I, I I'd seen some stuff on LinkedIn that you were doing this, but I didn't know what it was. Uh, but it really, you know, jump started me listening to everything. And so I've listened to a ton of them, uh, nothing in order, but you know, everybody we kind of knew together. And then some people, I, you know, I, I just don't know because they popped up, you know, it's great to hear those stories. And so uh, very honored that you asked me to be on here. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get started. Let's, we always just kind of go chronologically because yeah. I find it personally fascinating, you know, what got people into the military, you know, what, what their home life was like and what their, um, you know, they're the catalyst to get them into the military, you know, why they decide to do it. So if you don't mind starting there and then we'll just, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, grew up in the tiniest of tiny towns in Kansas. Uh, I mean, we are just as close to Kansas city as we were to Denver. Okay. <laughs> uh, we got about 2000 people in our town. And what's funny about that is we're the big town in the area. So, um, <laughs> you know, we had the pizza hut. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> we had a stoplight crazy, uh, <laughs> You know, so about 2,000 people and, you know, jumping well forward, uh, there's two of us, two techies that come from Phillipsburg, Kansas. Really? So, I mean, yeah, our moms are best friends. Uh, families know each other. Well, I mean, got 2,000 people, everybody knows everybody, but. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, sure enough. So, uh, when, you know, eventually when I became an instructor down in Florida, I actually put, you know, <laughs> this guy through tech school. So, um, yeah, I think per capita, we may be the largest uh uh, amount of techies per capita in, in the world because it's you know <laughs> one for every one thousand people. Right. Um, but yeah, little little tiny town. Uh, wonderful childhood growing up. Um, you know, my parents uh, very very young parents. I got a older sister, so um, you know, you can. Uh, we did the math there when we were old enough to understand what our <laughs> right. parents were doing. Um, yeah. uh, we never. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say we were poor growing up by any stretch. My parents were flat out amazing. I mean, I never needed anything ever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know to want things. So I was pretty good. Um, played sports for everything. Grew up a short, fat kid. Uh, grew like 10 inches over the summer. And all of a sudden, now I'm like six foot tall. Uh, you know, wrestled football, track, you know, did it all. Um, you know, pretty good grades. I think, you know, I got a couple Bs throughout my entire life. Uh, but one thing uh, coming out of high school that I knew I didn't want to do was waste a bunch of money on college. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's probably the only correct answer that I've ever come up with was like, don't put myself in debt because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Sure. Uh, and, you know, looking out, you know, what, what can get me out of a little tiny town? Um, what can keep me from going into debt? And I thought military and I mean, why would I join any other force other than the air force when we're talking about benefits? And right. so, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I decided to do. They were going to give me college. They were going to get me out of town. They were going to, and I was going to do four years uh, and then figure it out and, and move on with life. And that was the plan that I had. I graduated uh, May of 2000. Okay. Uh, and two weeks later, I joined the Air Force. Um, but kind of getting in the Air Force, I've heard a lot of guys' stories and very similar. So in Kansas, there's two recruiters. Uh, there was one about 60 miles away, and then there was one about five and a half hours away. Okay. So I uh, started putting the feelers out and uh, the the one that's 60 miles away had been fired for whatever reason. Oh, and so uh, the guy out of Kansas City was just ghosting us. And so I think 15 miles north of Nebraska, they had a, a recruiter, uh, something about crossing t state lines. But as soon as we gave her a call, this guy from Kansas City, he comes trucking out uh, to visit me in Phillipsburg. Oh, really? Yeah, and um, uh, he was probably one of the worst people I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> so uh, he didn't tell us anything. And, you know, both my parents own their own businesses. And so they were like asking the questions. And, sure. uh, he, you know, all he really told me was how cool it was to be a motorcycle cop in Germany. And I'm like, hey, man, awesome. I don't want to be a cop. Right. right. And that's the first time I was like, I don't want to be a cop. And that trend continued for a bit. <laughs> So, uh, despite him and his just terrible, terrible pitch, uh, I know the Air Force is still going to be a pretty good option. So, uh, we decide two weeks later, uh, you know, I get in a car with him and he was going to take us to Kansas City to MEPS. MEPS was closed, so he trucks us to Oklahoma City instead. And there's two of us in this car, so uh, I'm not in the same state. I'm uh, eight hours away from where I grew up. Uh, him and this other guy in the car were talking a little bit about joining. Uh, this guy was going into pararescue, of course, now. I had had no other conversations with this recruiter other than it was cool to be a motorcycle cop. Right, right. 
Uh, so that's it. Like, I just know that, Hey, by May 31st, I'm gonna get a $5,000 bonus by joining the air force. Nice. So that, that's <laughs> the information I had. He basically drops me off the steps in Oklahoma city and he drives off. Um, so now I'm alone. This other guy, he's already up doing whatever he knew he was supposed to do. So as I walk into the, to the MEPS, I go to the air force and uh, it's this uh, lady there and she's like, can I help you? And of course, yeah, I am here to join the air force. Great. What do you, what did you have in mind? I was like, well, <laughs> the air force, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she goes, well, what job do you want to do? And I'm like, I've said join the Air Force twice, so I'm getting a feeling that that's not what you're looking for. Right. She goes, what did your recruiter tell you? And I said, if I join by, you know, tomorrow, I get $5,000. And she goes, ooh, honey, sit down. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> throughout all that, I went in open general because that's what they had available. I'm like, I don't know any different. Yeah. So uh, that gets me down to basic training. Um uh, and the first thing I do is I sit down with a counselor or at whatever point in basic training, I sit down with the counselor and, you know, you write down everything that you want to do uh, that's on the list, you know, yeah. everything that they have spots open for. And so I put everything that was going to get me an aircraft, you know, load master refueler, all yada, yada, yada. And I thought, well, firefighter, cause I mean, that's, that's pretty honorable fighting sure. fires. That's cool. Uh, and then there was some bio environmental thing, which is basically an exterminator. Uh, and that was part of the business that my mother owned. I'm like, Hey, those are, those are real skills that, that do well. Yeah. Uh, so I hand this paper back to him. He's like, cool, we're going to make you a cop. I was like, no, no, you don't understand. That's not on there. And he's like, I don't think you understand. Get out of my office. I was like, oh, okay. It's like, why did I do all that then? Yeah. yeah. So uh, so then we go to a, to a meeting, just like a lot of guys. And it was uh, Sergeant Boussant and Sergeant Harris. Okay. Uh, big white guy, short black guy. Okay. Uh, the first thing they do is like, who likes to drink beer, blow shit up and get, you know, uh, I think my kids are going to listen to this later. So I'll bleep it out. You know, so, right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, you know, everybody in the room, they're lazy, raising their hand. Ah, yeah, we like to do all three of those things. Now, mind you, this is still before the war. Right. Uh, even started kicking off. And so, uh, you know, everybody puts their hands down. Everybody's laughing. My hand's still raised. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, great. We got us like, no, no, no. I want to join. I want to join Tech P. And they're like, well, we haven't even started telling you what it is. I'm like, I don't care. They're going to make me a cop. <laughs> so we get through that and uh, they, they invite us to that PT thing. Um, now I had endurance, like you just wouldn't imagine. You know, I've never been a strong guy. <laughs> yeah. Put me in a weight room, I just fail horribly. <laughs> uh, but you're not going to tire me out. So you know, the Army PT test. You know, I, I breeze through that. So we stood in this long line after the Army PT test, and he was asking everybody one question, right? And I can hear it up in front of me. You know, why do you want to be Tech P? And you know, we're 18 years old. It is, uh, God, it's got to be like April. No, May, um, June, it's probably in June of 2000. So, um, you know, nothing's happened. Sure. And, the, and these 18 year old kids like, I want to kill people. I want to kill people. And that's just what I heard. And I couldn't help but feeling in the back of this line, like, man, that just sounds so stupid. Cause yeah, like, yeah. who are we killing? Like desert storm was years ago. Right. You know, I'm from Kansas. I didn't know anything about all, you know, people jumping into Panama and all this stuff after that. So sure. Sure. Kill people. I'm like, God damn, that, that's just dumb. So I get up there and I completely brain fart and was like, all right, Ross, you know, why do we want to be tech P? And I just blurt out, oh, I don't want to be a cop. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, I see that. How about you come back and see us on Thursday? And that was the first time I'd heard that. Nice. So we go back on Thursday. There's like 19 of us in there. There's 11 spots. Uh, I think it came down to PT scores and mine were pretty wicked at that time. So nice. So that takes us down to tech school. Um, well, throughout basic training, uh, I blended in. At one point, I didn't get mail for like three weeks. Um, cause the, the, the drill instructors or TIs or whatever we call them, they didn't know my name. <laughs> they didn't know I was in their flight. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm from this little tiny town. Everybody know I joined the air force. And I'm not getting any mail. And, uh, I remember he was sitting up there and kind of leaned back in his desk and he, he was tapping this envelope. He's like, Ross Robinson. God dang, they keep sending this stupid mail here. I wish they'd figure out where he's and he throws it to the side. I'm like, oh, sir, I'm Russ Robinson. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. I had an entire box. It took me like 30 minutes to open everything. It was crazy. <laughs> Uh, at one point he's yelling at me while he was getting graded. He couldn't remember my name. I felt so bad for a drill instructor as he's like screaming and spitting in my face. Yeah. Uh, Cause he was just doing it to get uh, graded uh, for himself and he couldn't oh, okay. remember my name and he like brain farted there. I was like, all right, awesome. Uh, and then, um, you know, some other guys had explained when, you know, when they left, you know, that everybody gets on different buses. Well, ours yeah. was, our, you know, our instructor was like shaking everybody's hand, wishing them luck as they got on their separate buses. Uh, and then I saw him like eyeball me when my bus showed up and he, he could not bring my name up to, to save his life. <laughs> yeah. And he's like staring at me and he sees me, I make eye contact and I can see like, is he gonna like step forward and shake my hand? And he like, he just left it. So really? he didn't even say, <laughs> yeah, he just, I was just gone. So, uh, I can't, there was like three of us that got to Hurlburt together. 
um, jump in a taxi, head to the attack piece schoolhouse. And you remember down there when you pulled up, you're at the back of the building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, we can't find the entrance obviously. Cause that one laundry room door is closed. So we go in a side <laughs> entrance, which happens to be in the instructor entrance. Mind you, this set me up for success. Yeah. We yeah. get all the way down the instructor hallway. Nobody has seen us yet. And right before we pass that center CQ and instructors like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and I don't know if it was for you, but for us in basic training, we, we called everybody sir or ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Like they did not teach us to call NCOs <laughs> suction or anything. No, no. Yeah. Same. So in case, you know, hey, sir, we're here to start. And uh, man, uh, that was ugly. <laughs> so uh, we got educated not to call NCOs sir. Right, right. We'll write that in there. So it was pretty good. Throw us up to the third floor. I'm shell shocked. Um, <laughs> my day one at SACP, uh, I had just gotten out of my blues and was in sweats. PT gear or whatever, Mm -hmm. and they kick us out on the pad. So we go out on the pad, and uh, they're doing a health and welfare inspection on all the rooms. (laughs) So then they tell us, all right, fall in on your room number. And uh, my room number was on top of a box full of alcohol and porn. Um, So I, I, yeah, I took the hit for that because I'd been in that room for like 15 minutes. (laughs) So that was mine now. So uh, yeah, the rest of the day was just miserable, miserable. And then that night, I have just known I've made a mistake with my entire life. Right, right. <laughs> Sitting in this room. And uh, then a couple of the father flight guys basically break down my door, um, tell me to get into my civilian clothes because we're going out. Nice. And uh, I'm just like, well, no, we can't go out. I'm on phase one. <laughs> no, yeah. they didn't want to hear it. So uh, jumping off the second balcony, they take me out. I'm from Phillipsburg, Kansas. Uh, I had never been to anything outside of a small little local pub. Right. right. Uh, and that is the night I learned that um, Club La Vila in Panama City exists. So that was great. That was my first <laughs> first time out. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, soared through that. Like everybody, we had the... Um, had the jump school, you know, billets that you had to fight for. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we all did that, you know, the whole time there, um, nothing, you know, not one of them came out, uh, had great instructors. You know, I listened to Lee Blackwell's uh, thing on here. So that was awesome. He was there. Uh, Kibby was my yeah. flight lead for a while. Um, he would turn around during rucks and me and uh, Krensky. I don't remember. I don't know if you ever met Curtis Krensky. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's uh, a good dude. But Kibby would just be leading a ruck and, uh, you know, he was a legend. And yeah. he would turn around to me and Krensky would still be there. And he'd be like, nice. oh, what the hell are you guys doing? Uh, do push-ups. Um, <laughs> How dare you keep up with me? Right, right. Uh, <laughs> our field trip was pretty wicked. Um, like they all are, of course. I'm not saying ours was any harder. But um, I remember I remember at one point I was kind of hallucinating. You know, I shouldn't have, shouldn't have been up going. And uh, I thought something was chasing me, which not a big deal. You know, uh, sure. there's nothing that's going to take me down out there. Right. And then I, then I thought it might be Calvin Swales. Uh, and I got scared. <laughs> so that was the only time I got scared because I thought it might be him. Um, years later, I met him outside as an instructor. He's a great, great human being. Great. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but de- you know, as a as a as a student, you know, he was terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so everybody's fighting to get somewhere cool, and I got Fort Polk uh, on the JRTC side, the 548th. Um, so that was pretty hard shot to the, you know, to the old self confidence there. I get to go to Fort Polk, but show up down there. Um, I'm the lowest ranking guy, obviously, and I'm the last guy they're going to send straight out of tech school because they realized that it really screws over your career by starting somebody there. Right. Um, I'm not the only guy that has been on the show that started there. Uh, you know, Desi <laughs> started there as well, yeah, so yeah, yeah. feel a little better. Um, but it ended up being one of the best assignments you could have just at a really poor time. So this is really where uh, my career takes off, not because of me, but because of the people I was surrounded with. So, you know, right off the top there at Fort Polk, I don't know if you ever um, met the commander down there back in the day, uh, Gary Dakota. I don't think so, no. So he was a, he was a prior A-10 pilot, uh, and he was the commander down at Fort Polk. He's the highest ranking Air Force guy down there. Uh, he's from there. He wasn't going to ever take Colonel because he'd have to leave, and he, and he loved us. Yeah. Um, you would get in trouble down there. It's because you didn't invite him in on the shenanigans. So uh, <laughs> don't get caught because that's dumb. That's right. And then um, if you do get caught, he's pretty upset because you didn't tell him what you were doing so he could go jump in on it. So he was right. amazing. But our, you know, our senior enlisted guys, uh, Wayland Reed and Ron Myers were my two NCYCs down there. And so, yeah, I got two guys and they, they both did soft stuff throughout their careers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I know really, Ron. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar yeah. with Wayland though. So he was a quiet dude. Um, I, I think he, I can't remember if he, uh, who he was with, you know, obviously he was, you know, he's the kind of master sergeant that when he was happy, he was like, Hey, you're in a good, 
good mood master? And he's like, yeah, I ran over a small child on the way to work today. And you're like, oh, shit, leave him alone. <laughs> um, you know, but I started learning a lot of good stuff from them immediately. Uh, I was late to work one day uh, the second time because the roads had flooded. Mm. And, um, you know, we got in trouble because the, we couldn't get to work. And then the second time uh, they randomly flooded uh, with no rain. And so, like, we had no idea we were late. And I thought that, you know, why should I be why should I be signing this LOR? You know, how, how do you know? And, like, that's when I learned, you know, from great, great men, like, <laughs> we don't care. Like, <laughs> right. you will do the job uh, or, we'll, you know, you, you'll face the consequences. Like, your excuses don't matter. And so that sure. was a huge lesson that stuck with me to this day. Um, but pounding around down there, senior airmen were not JTAX fire marking, you know, all the NCOs, they're, uh, OCs. So, you know, you never see them, uh, but you get tons of air out there. There's red leg right next door. Um, but I had some great NCOs that kind of made sure that if you were willing, they were going to drag you around. So like Wes Morris, Jason Rutledge, um, just a whole list of guys. Uh, Jason Minders was a, a staff and a tech down there with me. Hmm. Um, and, and we all piled around together. Um, but they would, they would take me to the target working groups. I mean, they weren't called that back then, but you know, the MDMP, the planning and everything. So I got to see all that at a real young age, nice. um, that most OCs down there don't, uh, unfortunately, um, nine 11 happened while we were there. And so we were 100% not deployable unless you wanted to go like guard, you know, the port of Johns with the host nations or something. Yeah. So uh, the, the war, you know, we couldn't get deployed. You know, we look over at the, at the, at the debt next to us and got Max Porus is being pulled out of there, you know, by yeah. uh, special forces so he can deploy right away. And so we were like, Hey, can we get over there? And like, yeah, you know, you can go, you can go guard shitters. And, you know, we didn't want to do that, but sure. Yeah. So one funny story that'll kind of catch back up to us is, uh, you know, Jason Rutledge was my supervisor at the time and he was graduating ALS out there. And uh, the shenanigans that happened were just epic. I mean, <laughs> It eventually it resulted in us being barred from ALS graduations, like the entire squadron. <laughs> uh, the commander had to write uh, not just letters of apology, but he had to write personal letters of apology because, like I said, he was involved in everything. Right. Um, and he just took all the flack. And so the next time we actually were able to go up to ALS graduations, they had to handpick certain people, and I was handpicked to go. And, you know, we're met at the door by the instructors. They escort us to our table, which is like – it's got a buffer of empty tables all around us. <laughs> and then, um, you know, instructors started to come around there at the end of graduations because they had to escort us out. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty dirty. <laughs> well, fast forward when we were all at the 17th, um, there were two support personnel up in the front office. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them is like telling this story and like all the details of what went on that night. I'm just like, yeah. who, who put you up to this? Right, right, he's right. like, what, what? Because he's, I mean, uh, I'm like the main character in one of these, one of these stories. <laughs> right. Uh, and, he's, and he's relaying this. I'm like, Hey man, like what's going on here? He's like, yeah, you guys are crazy. You know, that's why I don't go out with you guys much. I'm like, dude, that was me. <laughs> and he remembers, uh, I mean, it was, yeah, I remember it too, but yeah, he remembers the crap we were pulling that night. It was nuts. That's uh, crazy. It's just funny. We, you know, he was graduating in that class too. So, <laughs> so, uh, just like, uh, you know, Desert Richard said to get out of Fort Polk, um, you know, you got to volunteer to go to Korea. Yeah. And so, um, you know, a lot of my friends were in Korea. It was going to be great. You know, you go to Korea, that's where you meet all these people. You control a ton of cash. You're, you know, you're up at all these, you know, tech fees are just, there's a ton of them there. And I got stuck at group. So, uh, it was, it was awesome. Um, <laughs> getting there though, coming out of, of, uh, out of Polk, I was jump, um, you know, as a, a, an ETAC for like two months. So 2003 nice. is when they changed it, uh, to JTAC. So I think when I got my, my initial, I was an ETAC. And by the time I got into Korea, I, I was now a JTAC again, uh, air assault, um, you know, I got to, you know, uh, went through all this stuff. So they, they really took care of us there, even though they kind of burned us down. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I get to Korea, uh, and your orders don't matter what it says on your orders don't matter. You know, the chiefs, they just kind of decide where they want you. And so they stuck me at group and man, <laughs> uh, if I can, if I'm the type of guy that got depressed and got low, I think it would have been there. Right. Um, <laughs> Cause, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the guy's name, but he was on the outgoing. He's like, Hey, you're going to, you're going to be the equipment guy. So I got a tech sergeant signing. Like I was a senior airman. So I signed the CR CRL, uh, without, oh. <laughs> doing an inventory oh it's like nah, it's all there man like ah, yeah yeah trust me yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh i gotta learn that lesson um so that was a miserable miserable time but there earl koval became my supervisor oh, okay and i have loved all my supervisors and you know even the ones i had before him my best friends in the world today yeah uh, but earl is the one that taught me what a professional supervisor is um he flat out shocked me 
<laughs> some of the stuff that's supposed to happen um, yeah, yeah. because he just did it all by the book and he was one, he was wonderful. Um, but, uh, you know, I was kicking around with guys like, um, you know, uh, Aki was there. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sean Lloyd showed up. I've got uh, Brad Ellis from soft was there. Um, Corbett shows up, nice. you know, so I've got all these guys that, you know, I've known before and I know in the career field and they've got all these awards and, you know, we're just pissing and moaning at group. Um, so luckily those guys were there. Uh, oh, all those Vivian, guys were a group with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We were all wow. grouped together. So, you know, I'm going down to the vehicle bay and you know, it's just like, it's like a celebrity <laughs> celebrity no uh, conference every day I go to work. Um, so, uh, Vivian had just put on chief, you know, he'd gotten there before me, but he had just put on chief over there. So, uh, was, uh that was pretty good. Um, uh, so Aki and I, you know, palling around a little bit as much as possible, you know, as much as I can as a senior airman trying to run things and, you know, a guy like him coming in. Yeah. I remember we, we went to a, uh, you know, we're kind of day drinking one day and we're just like <laughs> minding our P's and Q's. Um, and this guy comes up to us at one of the bars right outside Osan and he's like, you guys tag P's? And we're like, yeah. You know, I'm sitting by Aki, right? And this is after, you know, everything. Okay. Uh, or his initial everything. Sure, sure. And uh, he's like, well, you guys, you know, Sergeant so-and-so? And we're like, nope. He's like, you don't know Sergeant so-and-so? We're like, never heard of him. He's like, oh, well, if you don't know Sergeant so-and-so, you guys ain't shit. <laughs> and I'm just like, Bold. oh, man, alcohol-related incident all over this situation. <laughs> right. <laughs> And so I turned to him like, you know what? You're right. I haven't done anything, but I think you need to maybe settle it down here because we're going to take you outside and we're just going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> right. He was like, oh, well, if you don't know, so, 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 blah, 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 you know, whatever he was saying. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. And so we go to grab this guy. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, 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 boys, I'm chief so-and-so. Oh. And uh, I look at Aki. I'm like, man, we've all been drinking. And so is he. I don't think it matters. And he's like, I don't think it does either. So we, <laughs> we snatch up this guy and we're dragging him backwards out of the bar. <laughs> and uh, he has now learned that his rank is not going to protect him. Right. And so he's like, I'll buy you guys beer. And we're like, ooh, free beer. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah. Stomping this guy. <laughs> and so we decide on the free beer. Nice. Um, plus, I think, uh, you know, uh, it was probably going to get us out of a lot of trouble. Sure. And so um, – he That's so, that podium. sounds so much like Korea, though. That, like, defines <laughs> yeah. Korea, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. just drinking or fighting or, you know. Right. Yeah, just. Well, he doesn't pony up. Oh. And so we're just we're just kind of waiting on it. And uh, at one point, he's walking across the bar, and he won't make eye contact. And so we go steal his beer. Um, and he realizes that, like, hey, maybe he needs to leave. And so uh, whatever day, weekend day that was, on Monday morning, we're, like, right outside Vivian's office. We're like, hey. Uh, just in case, <laughs> do you know this guy? And he's like, yeah, he's uh he's the chief over here. We're like, Oh God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, nothing ever came of it. Uh, oh, good. In Korea. Right. So, yeah. Right. You know, I'm with, uh, I'm with a group. And so we don't have any of the great exercises or anything, you know, I'm right. going to the Korean Agos teaching there. Um, you know, we do these big pen series and, you know, I'm heading down to stroke of the second Republic of Korea army. And they got this big mountain bunker. We're talking like, you know, it's a, it's a lateral mountain. Yeah. And there's two entrances on each side and just blast doors all the way through. I mean, we're talking movie style mountain bunker, right. nuts, nuts. And you're like walking past fighting positions. Everything can be sealed off. And right before we got this big exercise, they just rewired the whole thing. Well, it's a Korean ASOC. That's, that's back then. That's what I don't know today, but that's what was going to control the air was a Korean ASOC. And I was just there to liaison to a Korean ASOC. So uh, real important, sure? um, but they didn't put in a sat cable for a sat antenna. And so our guys were like, Hey man, you got to do, you got to do sat. I'm like, Oh, well, Corbett's like, I have, you know, we can, we can remote the RSC from the truck all the way in and yeah. you can run sat out in the truck. I'm like, Hey, awesome. I love it. I'll sit out in the truck, run the radios and sat. And you just talk on sat until I'm dead. Cause that's what happens to everybody outside this. <laughs> right, <I'm> exactly. <laughs> He's like, yep. So I spend three days running a fiber optic cable and you know, you can't run it through a door cause they close those doors. It's just gonna snap it. And so, yeah. you know, it's not maintained. And I'm like pushing it through the sides of these metal doors through the rock. And I do, I run like 200 yards of cable in three days and we are rocking. So I'm sitting outside on a generator. They're complaining that, you know, the housing next door is complaining that I'm running a generator with, you know, to, to power my pallet and all this stuff. I don't care. I'm using bubble gum because the generator suck and it's leaking diesel everywhere. And it's like right. five packs of bubble gum a night <laughs> during my shift to keep the gas in the thing thing. I'm so proud of myself like to do this. And, you know, Corbett's just killing it in there. And, you know, Vivian comes down. It's awesome. Like, look what I've done. I'm an amazing yeah. human. And he was like, 
sideburns are too long. And he walks off. I'm like, you can... <laughs> <laughs> that's all he said. It's like, you can... damn it. Uh, so I didn't even bother with the cable. I'm not unrunning. I just left it in place. I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. So oh, I had a guaranteed follow on to Fort Stewart. And I didn't know anything. I just knew that, hey, I, I want to go where the, I'm going to train be with the Rangers. Right. And that's really all I knew of the topic. I had no clue about anything. I knew they were in, uh, well, what, what I thought was Stuart. One of my NCOs had come from Stuart and he's like, no, no, man, you'll never see them. They're not there. They're at mm. Hunter Army airfield, yada, yada, yada. I was like, well, crap, man. I don't want to go to some piss pot army base for no reason. Like, right. uh, so I just dropped my guaranteed follow on went at the whims of the air force. Uh, you know, my dream sheet, I had Benning on there and I knew a guy from, um, Polk that went there, Cody Carney, if you remember him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he went to Benning. I was like, wow, man, him and I get along great. I'll go to Benning, right? And so I dropped my guaranteed follow on trying to get close to the Rangers, knowing nothing other than that, what I just said. Right. Uh, went to the Worldwide, decided to go hook up with a friend that I knew, uh, and, and it got me to Benning, which lo and behold, that's where the regiment and third bed is. So yeah. show up there. Uh, Gary Knowles is uh, one of our NCOs. Uh, I'm walking in, signing it in. He asked me, hey, when you go into ALS, I'm like... <laughs> why uh he's like because oh, you got a line for staff and you gotta kind of go for that so that's where i learned that and so um you know I'll, I'll go over you know some of it while i was there but i went to als like right away turned around did a cast trip with stockman and those guys came home we hit uh christmas real quick uh and then i went to pre-ranger ranger school and deployed for six months with uh the fourth brigade third id oh, nice. um, so i just i just was never there for i was in that section for eight months or so i can't even remember how long i was there but yeah. i think one of the discussions you were having was like when did it change so when i got there in august of 2004 it was the 17th asos uh, for third brigade okay and then while i was there before january of 2006 it changed to the 15th asos okay so sometime in that that's that timeline so like but, you guys were a flight or you yeah. were a different flight of the seven, whatever we were B flight yeah. or whatever, you know, whatever you guys were versus what we were. So gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but it was great. Uh, you know, it was a great crew there. Um, you know, you guys were right across and I just remember every time you guys did anything, I'd raise my hand and be like, Hey, I'll go do that. And they're like, you guys would just walk in and be like, I'll do it. And you're like, well, shut the fuck up, dude. We don't even know you. Like, what are you doing? Like, we're, we're just here to BS. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that too. Uh, yeah. You know, so I packed, I packed a lot of shoots. Um, you know, did a lot of that. Um, and then I don't know if you remember this, but it was before I deployed. It was before I went to ranger school. Uh, Brandenburg and you and Maddie and I went west to Amoa to train because I just raised my hand to go with you guys. Yeah. And so Brandenburg drove. You were up in the front passenger seat. Me and Maddie were in the back, right? We're just training. And I'm just there to hang out, right? You know, just absorb. <laughs> Be awesome by proxy. Right. And uh, at one point, I'm driving around and Brandenburg's like, hey, man, give me your, uh, give me your GPS. So I hand him up the dagger and everything. And so we're driving around him. Of course, I mean, in true romantic fashion, he's, he's going to ask me where we're at. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm following around on my map, just do to do to do. And, um, that we're in, we're in between bulls of air. So he's just driving around and I'm kind of following around. And so he stops, he's like, where are we at? And so, you know, I'm looking at my map. I'm like, okay, you know, here, I make a little pencil mark on the map, I'll hand it up, show him. And he was like, all right. And he's looking at it and he's like, no, try again. So he hands the map back to me and okay and I'm, fuck, i mean that's that's where we're at yeah, so yeah i was like hey hey sergeant like this this is 100 percent where we're at and he's like all right no, like no i'm telling you it's not where you're at i was like oh okay and i'm looking and i you know i'm rechecking all the information i have i'm like sergeant this is where we're at and now he gets mad at me and he was like you know i have a dagger up here right like i don't know if you think i'm with you like i don't know if you're if you're me but like I'm giving you one last chance to tell me where we're at and to knock it off. And I'm thinking back there, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like I'm not messing with him. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's where we're at. And so you have kind of like put up a wall and you're like, Hey, maybe if I don't make eye contact, I won't get drug into this up in the front seat. <laughs> and I look to my right to Maddie. I'm right behind Brandenburg in the driver's seat. I look to right to Maddie and Maddie's going, don't do it. Like mouthing at me, like, no, don't do it. <laughs> And I'm like, Sergeant, I, I'm not messing with you. Like, but that is where we're at. And he just goes, get out. I'm like, ah. <laughs> and he smokes the dog crap out of me outside of that car. And, you know, who do I think I am? And, you know, uh, you, know, all, you know, all the great stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he recovers me. 
Uh, and now he wants to know what my problem is. And I said, hey, do, do you mind if I see the dagger? And sure enough, that sucker's blinking gray and <laughs> black. Uh, he's got it up in the windshield. It's not getting a signal. And so oh. the grid he was reading, thinking that's where we're at. And uh, so he <laughs> sit there and it acquires. And he's like, all right, all right. And he looks and it's spot on. And it's not that I'm a great navigator or anything. No, but you're, yeah. I was following along and on the map, there was a river or like a creek. Mm-hmm. He, the creek in real life didn't exist and he couldn't see that on a map. And so he's parks out and just in the middle of a blank area. Yeah. yeah. The hardest you can do. Well, it was like 15 meters behind us was, it was a culvert. <laughs> he didn't see a stride <laughs> over that culvert, but that's where that creek was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dried up. And so that's how I knew. Oh, man. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough situation, man, because yeah. you're like, you're still on the outside. So you can't like push yeah. back, you know, you can't be aggressive. You, you did the right thing. You did the exact right thing because. Uh, if you would have pushed back or like got an attitude, then it'd have been tons worse, you know. But oh yeah, I mean, I had the three of you in there. And you're right, I was on the outside. I was like, Fuck, we're in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. Like they'll just like they'll bury me in that dry <laughs> creek bed. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what happened to Robinson, man. He uh, just didn't, yeah. man. He, who he didn't come with us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nobody even remembers his name. We don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, oh. so we go back and you know a lot of great stuff. We had a lot of fun there uh, on both sides of the house. And then uh, one day I'm walking down, so I'm heading from like the vehicle, the vehicle base side of the hallway. Uh, and up to the front doors in the hallway. And I can't remember the life of me, which uh, 15th ASOS guy was walking next to me. Uh, I was on the right side of the hallway. He was on the left and we're walking towards the front doors uh, and just BSing. And uh, at some point in our conversation out of my mouth came, I was like, yeah, I want to go to Ranger School because, I mean, who doesn't, right? right. Uh, well, Matty Green is like right behind me. And he goes, hey, man, did you say you want to go to Ranger School? I was like, absolutely. Um, so he says, follow me, makes a phone call. Uh, eight days later, I started a pre-Ranger. Nice. So it was good. I got over there with the regimental pre-ranger 100%, um, you know, set you up. Uh, I got to meet a lot of those guys. And that was kind of put me in that group of individuals. So when we went to ranger school, uh, you know, I wasn't alone. I wasn't just like alone. I'm afraid like I had, I had the bad boys, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was nice. And they all kind of oh, knew yeah. me. Um, so that was really good. Good grief. Yeah. So, uh, ranger school, the, the leadership school, right. I had no idea what to expect. Sure. I get there like I'm pre-ranger and everything. I'm with all the bad guys. And so they're like, Hey, uh, we're just going to skip the whole part where we tear down and rebuild like the crew serves. I'm like, uh, can we not? I've never touched one. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. We'll just give you time with your classmates. We're not going to waste our time. And so I ended up setting, uh, like I was the fastest guy in ranger school itself. Nice. To assemble all those weapons. Uh, cause those guys really squared me away. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, once we get out there, uh, I I can't say I kind of got to listen to the whole spiel because it doesn't come out right. But I can't say Ranger School was hard. Um, like I said, I w- I just had unlimited endurance, uh, yeah. and so I didn't ever really get tired. I remember getting hungry once, and that was I was walking down down the mountain in Mountain Phase, and I think mm-hmm. I got bored. Um, so I was just so busy the entire time. I didn't have time to get tired or hungry. Yeah, uh, to where it really affected me. So, I mean, what I guess about the a, sleep? How did the sleep affect you? The lack of sleep? So, um, pr- you know, like everybody, but I think that's where I really s- I started to learn. I have like the anti mood. And yeah. so when it's just really bad, I'm just pinging. It's like, yeah, it's bad. It's a military. It's supposed to be like, this is really training. <laughs> that's <right?"> awesome. <laughs> and uh, the first time that really came out was there in Georgia uh, at Benning phase. Um, it started to rain. We were supposed to be back to get sleep and we got lost, you know, dress you know following ducks in a row they they let us into a lake somehow we're, and we're we're just buried in there and so yeah. the trail ends at the lake not supposed to be a lake at all and and now there's one so we're obviously we're lost and it starts to rain on us and we're just in this line it's dark and it's miserable um and i start to giggle uh because <laughs> it just like it just, people say it just it can't get any worse like right. it can't get any worse it can't get any worse well, yeah yeah it can because <laughs> it'll start to rain <laughs> Uh, and then the wind will blow and then you're lost and then it's dark and now you're not sleeping and just what else could happen? Right. right, uh, right. Well, let's just hold on. We'll find out. Yeah. And one of the guys started getting mad. He's like, you think this is funny? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so uh, he gets real, real aggressive. And I'm just like, it can get worse. Cause now we're about to get in a fist fight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, let's, don't say that out loud. And so, uh, uh, he, you know, he gets up real close to my face. He's like, what's so funny about this? I'm like, cause somebody's going to say, at least it can't get worse. And now look, it does. And he kind of cocks his head. And he's like, you're right. <laughs> and so now everybody's starting to giggle and it kind of brings us out of a bad spot. Yeah, for sure. So a great uh, attitude. <laughs> yeah. So we do, uh, we, we move on, we move on to, to mountain phase. Um, and I can honestly say that 
you know, as a whole, those, those ranger school instructors are pretty dang good when it comes to like not singling people out. Mm-hmm. Um, I never really got singled out to be in the Air Force, except in mountain phase. You know, we get off the bus, we're in line, and they said, hey, you're going to go to this point, you're going to line up, and that's when we'll pick the admin leadership, which is the worst job ever because yeah. you just have more responsibility and you're not getting graded. It just sucks. Yeah. And uh, he starts to walk off and he goes, oh, I got an Air Force guy in here. Right, and I'm standing next to all my ranger friends. <laughs> they just take a step back. I'm like, <laughs> so I end up being the uh, admin platoon sergeant. So Jeez. accountable for all dumb stuff the entire time. And at one point, you walk up Mount Yoda, you do your overnighter trip there, and then um, I could hear all the instructors calling all the admin, like, "Hey, roster number this that, like, come, you know, get over here, get over here, get over here." Uh, or you know, everybody gets called over there. I don't get called over. I'm like, son of a bitch, because everybody's getting replaced, right? You know, they're just going to go be regular dumbass students again. And I don't get called over there, so I go running up there. It's like, hey, Sergeant, you know, you didn't call my number. He's like, so? I'm like, well, you know, I thought maybe, you know, I get, I was going to get replaced. He's like, do you want to be replaced? I was like, oh, I man. did when I ran over here, but <laughs> not so much anymore. And so I end up being the admin platoon sergeant for the entire phase. Oh, my God. Uh, you get a couple grades. Each time you get two chances, you just got to pass one. Um and so my first patrol there in mountain phase was the helicopter movement. And, you know, I'm, I'm an, I'm an NCO. I've got this, like make sure everybody gets there and back easy. So, and I do like, it's flawless. We get everybody up on the mountain. Um, we go do it. And then we got to exfil to the patrol base. So I'm almost done. I'm good. Everybody's coming out. Several chocks go in and out hundred percent accountability. And then the, you know, the fog rolls in right as my chalk, I'm last chalk. And so we have to walk uh, where everybody else got flown to. Um, mm. You know, I took care of it all. Never, never freaked out, got there. I thought, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a shoe in. I'm going to Florida. Easy day, easy day. My second one is I was going to be a PL. And so I knew I was coming up for my grade. We wake up from the patrol base. Um, and so the way it worked back then, who knows today, but uh, you do two iterations of grading throughout the day. Uh, you get graded as actions on, or you get graded as patrol base procedures, right? They kind of swap that out. So I knew that um, we were going to swap and I was going to start my PO gig that day for that mission. And so the patrol base activities, they get all the mission and they do all the planning. And then we just get blown out of the patrol base for whatever reason. Yeah. And so the outgoing PL, him and I are just like running, you know, run. <laughs> That's what you do. Um And he's handing me all this stuff and briefing me up. I'm like, yeah, man, I got it. And that when he handed me the orders, that was the last time I saw them. Like, I have no idea what happened to the physical orders, but I had good notes and everything. And so, you know, now we're way behind on time. Uh, We don't, we don't have the ability to, you know, to go into a nice uh, rally point to where we can go and do, you know, anything, you know, the the leader survey or anything. So we run up to the objective, just a few of us, we kind of put like, hey, this is not a committee anymore. We're out of time. So we just start putting people in. Uh, we get there. We're kind of sitting, you know, up in our ambush. And we're supposed to ambush this enemy patrol that has a POW. Like, cool. Um, you know, my this is standard. Hey, you know, got the isolation force out. So we're going we're gonna to initiate with the Claymore if it's safe. If not, we're going to initiate with the, you know, with the uh, uh, crew serves. All You know, all just standard SOP stuff. And so the instructor there, he's like, hey, man. Uh, so great. You're going to initiate with claymores what's your secondary plan i was like well we'll initiate with the uh crew serve he's like what if they all fall asleep i'm like then i'll call them on the radio and wake them up he's like what if your radio dies i'm like well i do a check right so i did a radio check it's good right he's like that's it i was like fine i'm gonna take this rock i'm gonna throw it i'm gonna hit my (laughs) weapons platoon sergeant in the helmet he's gonna wake up i'm gonna give him the eye thing down the objective and he's gonna know and initiate like i don't you know i don't know what to tell you yeah, what like, I've stinking plans to make this thing go off. He's like, all right, Ranger. All right. So we settle back and, <laughs> you know, we don't get a call from isolation, nothing. We just like see the enemy patrol coming up. And so this, this instructor, he's just like side eyeing me. I was like, yeah, okay. Okay. No Claymore. It's like my weapons guy. I'm looking down. I can kind of see him. He's just, I can see from behind. He's, he's out. So I'm calling him on a radio. It doesn't work. Obviously, my radio doesn't work. And yeah. so I kind of look at the instructor and he's holding my freaking rock. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Let's see it. Yeah. So I do. I take this rock and it bounces straight off the weapons uh, squad leader's helmet. Like perfect shot. One in a million. Yeah. And he wakes up. He looks at me and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah got it. Yeah, we're good. And he's like, uh. I'm like, ah. Uh. And he goes back to sleep. <laughs> oh. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So I pop up. 
uh, with my M4 because you know, what else am I going to wake up? And I, I open up with my M4. Yeah. And one shot and the sucker jams. Oh, <laughs> so, man. Luckily, one's enough to wake everybody up, but it's not enough to um, not have them kill everything on the objective. So POW, everybody dies. Oh, uh, so we go into SSC <laughs> and through this entire nightmare, I mean, we cl- we cross the LSC, which you're not supposed to do. We don't have, we, you know, I don't do a good leader's recon. I don't do anything right. Everybody mm-hmm. falls asleep. Like the whole time I had, lo- I had known that I had lost hires op order. So I'm a no-go, right? So I could flat give a shit less of what goes on. My entire goal is to get my guys to the patrol base because we need to sleep. Sure. Like that's everything drove me to that. Like it doesn't matter what happens to me. I passed my first one. I'm good. Right, right. right. Uh, so we get on the we get on the objective where SSC and my platoon sergeant, who has been a rock star for me. Like we're we're ranger buddies, so we got lucky to get paired up together. Anyways, nice. And he starts to lose it a little bit, and I'm just like, hey man, like you're good. I'm such a nightmare today. <laughs> that the stuff you've been doing to take care of me, like you are good. And he was like, oh. and he goes about his business. And one of the instructor comes up and he's like, uh, Hey, um, what's the plan? I told him, he's like, great. Uh, where are your nods? I'm like, all right. Oh, Oh my God. Uh, my carabiner had locked open. So my nods had fallen off and bounced. He's like, what are you going to do Ranger? What are you going to do? I'm like, well, I'm going to take one fire team. And we're going to canvas this mountainside. Everybody else is going to go to the patrol base. They're going to set it up. One fire team's just going to have to, I'm going to, I'm going to burn one. Uh, I know where everybody been. We're going to find them. He's like, hmm, good plan. Like starting my rucksack. So he saw me drop them. Um, oh. Asked me if I wanted to take that on my grade, the major minus, a major minus, or if he, if it wanted to reflect it on my graded measure. I'm like, hey, let me, uh, let me think about that. Cause I kind of knew I failed. Mm-hmm. Like, so what are you, <laughs> you going to do to me? Right, right, uh, right. He came back later and said I was getting a major minus. So he wasn't going to put it on my grade. Uh, and there was a reason for that. So we get to the end of Ranger School and you get pulled in to get briefed. And uh, he's like, so, uh, you know, you failed your first grade of control, the helicopter movement. And I'm just like, son of a bitch, those blueberry pancakes are not that good. <laughs> like, I don't care what anybody says. Like, I'm here to tell you, like, they're just blueberry pancakes. They're not worth staying a second face in mountains. Sure, sure. Um, and he's like, can you pass your second one? And I'm like, What? Uh, he's like, yeah, man, it was, it was great. I was like, like, it, it, can I say anything to change your mind here? Like, if I say something, will you be like, oh, no, you're a fail? And he's like, no, man, you're going to Florida. It's like, great. I got a question. Like, why the hell did you pass me and fail me on the first one, pass me on the second one? He's like, well, the first one, you never opened your Ranger handbook. It's like, oh, yeah. He's like, it was flawless, but not the way we do things here. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should have done that. Uh, it's yeah. like, How did you pass me on that first one? He's like, I need to ask you a question. Like, how did you remain so calm? It's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you were a shit show. Like everything just went wrong and you just breezed through it. No problem. You had a plan for everything. You executed flawlessly, done, done, and done. And you got back. Like it was awesome. I was like, oh, well, to tell you the truth, I just assumed that I'd failed. And so what are you going to do? I just wanted to get the guys to the patrol base. The quickest way is mission success. Uh, so we headed down to Florida. I got stuck being the stinking platoon sergeant again. Um, made it through, uh, we had an officer with us that probably shouldn't have been with us. That's when I really saw like, Hey, uh, they're, they're pushing numbers through down here too. Yeah. Um, so he didn't do like several or patrols cause he went to the medic, you know, with a sprained ankle and they like interjected him after swamp phase. You know, you say you got stuck with it, but just knowing you and hearing about all this, the things you did in ranger school. I, I guarantee you they did it on purpose because you were a good leader. I mean, I, you want to, you, you're a humble dude. I, you know, that's why they stuck you. That's why they kept you doing it in mountains. And then in Florida, they probably put you in and they're like, this guy, he's going to, he's going to keep these guys together and do the right thing. I, I, that's what I think. All right, so just looking in. Possibly because like things just couldn't get bad enough to really <laughs> right. get me down until we were like, hey, we're just going to chill. Like <laughs> no security, have this ice cream. And I'm just like, mm, what's going on here? <laughs> right. um, but in Florida, so some of that started to happen. And, uh, like as the, as one of the leaders there, like I got to take care of all these admin functions, but there's a lot of lacks. Like as you're getting closer and closer, they give you time to go to the bar. Um, you know, especially after all the graded measures are done, like you get these freedoms, but stuff has to get done for these things to happen. I'm just like, Hey, who's cleaning crew serve weapons? Who's doing this? Everybody has quit. Right. Yeah. So like things are good. Things are easy and I'm pissy. So I really <laughs> saw some, um, some poor leadership skills come out through me there and you could actually see my peers. Uh, my peers dropped like I was like high 80s, low 90s peer throughout the entire course until those last few peers there in Florida. And like now I'm hitting like in the 70s. I'm like, Ugh, uh. like these sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
but we get through. Uh, it was great, and I got that tab now. Uh, I immediately roll into a deployment. Um, so we're third brigade, third ID there at uh, Benning. Mm -hmm. uh, I go into a deployment with, but I'm going to get attached to fourth ID. Or I'm sorry, fourth brigade, third ID. And so I don't okay. even get to go with my guys. But right before I head out the door, Q comes in. He was like, "Hey, uh, I know you were interested in coming over and applying to come over with us. Like, where's your packet?" Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have it done. I don't have any deployments. I don't have any experience, nothing. Uh, you know, I had come from, you know, GRTC as a fire marker, not even as an OC. And then I was a group weenie, you know, and I got some CACRL experience and that's it. Um, I had never run a range before. Like somebody had always taken care of stuff and you just kind of hand you the mic when it's your turn to do CAS. Mm -hmm. And so now I got cues like, hey, where's your package? Like, let me go get some experience. He's like, uh, I'm not asking. Just give me what you got. Right. Okay. So I give him an incomplete package and I, uh, I head off to... Head off to Iraq with uh, 4th Brigade, 3rd ID, and they're going to put me at division. And so Eddie Morales was the NCIC at division, um, and he's the guy that when Matty Green got me a slot in Ranger School, we had to call Savannah, uh, Stuart. He's the one that answers the phone and says, hey, if he can get a spot, I'll support it. So nice. like, he's a prior <laughs> Ranger Tech P. So, uh, you know, now I just made it through Ranger School. Um, he, you know, so it was good. So he's there, and my best friend in the world's down at Fob Falcon. It's just south of the green zone there and um in Iraq, uh, Jason Rutledge, he's with 3-3 ACR, they're on Falcon, there's three battalions on the FOB, and he's the only JTAC, and so he waits for me to get in country and gives uh, Eddie Morales a call, and he's like, hey, I need another JTAC, by the way, Ross and I work well together. Nice. Well, I mean, Eddie Eddie just saw that, you know, he, I just came back from major school, so he's, he's probably pretty happy with me, no problem, and I, and I head down to work with, uh, it's a 184 um, National Guard, Aerosol okay. National Guard, and they'd been in country for six months before, and they didn't have a JTAC. Jeez. Rutledge was trying to cover down. Um, they didn't have an FSO. Uh, their FSO uh, wasn't a fire support officer. He was just some random officer that had commissioned in there. Their FSO in I see, I can't really say. I mean, I don't even remember the guy, and I worked with yeah. him for six, you know, I worked fires for six months, but they were getting just tore apart. I mean, it was, the morale was incredibly low. Their yeah. wall of casualties uh, there in their talk was just the entire hallway long. Jeez. Um, their battalion commander had been fired for shenanigans of what his security platoon up in the green zone was like charging uh, uh, protection money and they got caught. Um, there's, yeah. Oh yeah. God. So, uh, and then there was some um, firearm discharge during tactical questioning, questioning that, you know, just some bad stuff. And so he'd gotten fired and uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Wood from um, third ID was running the, running the business. And he had a, uh, an active duty battle captain there in the talk. So I get in and I meet, um, I meet my romad. It's a guy named Levi Bates. So Levi is, a uh, incredibly experienced romad. He was in, I mean, he was with third ID when they took Iraq, like oh, okay. w when they invaded. Right. So here I am, I've never done anything except a silly school. Um, and I'm the JTAC and, you know, and I got this romad. And so we go out on our first patrol with the battalion. Um, and I, it's not a battalion size mission, but we've got our OPs kind of everywhere. And so as we're rolling, we're going to go see this OP and uh, we start getting the calls. They're under fire, right? They're, t they're taking mortar fire. And this is pretty standard. Um, I'd kind of been briefed a little bit. So I, I, you know, I could picture where it was and I could picture where they were taking fire because I knew there's an island that sits right on the boundary of, of the, uh, I can't remember if it's a division boundary or brigade boundary, but I think it was the division boundaries is the river right there south of Baghdad. Yeah. And there's an island on the river. So you can imagine who owns the island. Like who's who's got freedom of fires there underneath a boundary line. So there's a nice defilade on the island. So there was two tanks. So two Abrams, uh, you know, 40 millimeter grenade launchers, cruiser weapons, snipers, like everything's on this OP. But nobody can get after, you know, these teams that are sneaking onto the island and sitting behind the defilade and just lobbing mortars. Uh -huh. So we start getting these calls. So we stop, we get out like, Hey, like, what are we going to do? And then like, as we're talking about it, uh, we'll call it sniper fire. Cause it was individual fire, right? Uh, it could have sure. been some asshole with an AK to shoot once or twice at us, but it kept us pinned down cause it was pretty continuous. And so, um, we're going to get some casts on it. And like, I've never controlled in combat. You know, I've never really controlled by myself outside of a range. I've always had my NCOs there. Um, and I'm turning to, uh, God, this had to have been later then. Yeah, because I didn't control anything with Levi, but I got Mike Macias as a role mind now. And so oh, okay. I'm turning to Mike, I'm like, give me some casts. And he was like, okay, okay, okay. And he's like, a little bit later, he goes, Sergeant Robinson, what do you want? I was like, cast, Mike, get on Jarn and give me some casts. And so I'm working, and I'm working with the commander and everything. And so he asked me again, Sergeant Robinson, what do you want? I was like, Mike, seriously, give me some fucking casts. Like, do your job is what I want at this point. And he goes, <laughs> right. you don't understand. Chariot Direct is on the Jarn. And he wants to know exactly what you want. So, like, I've got uh, 
what was it chariot direct either the division commander or you know the uh the chops at the AO, at the aoc I, I don't know who it was but yeah must have been the division commander was like what do you want so i was like yeah, yeah. man it'd be really sweet if i got some f-18s with laser mavs and some apaches delays sure enough they show up uh you know <laughs> so my first my first cast drop was with laser mavs um guided in by apaches nice uh, and they hit a five-man team two of them don't go anywhere three of them like pop up and start to run the apaches take out one you know because I, I allow them to follow up mm-hmm. um and then the guys that have been getting mortared for months uh on that op were watching the whole thing go down and those guys just you know unmask themselves to, you know to two abrams and you know however many cruisers they got set up on this fortress of theirs. So it was just nuts. And they took them all out. So that was kind of, uh, you know, my first introduction to, to kinetic operations with this battalion and they were yeah, pretty yeah. happy with me. But so, uh, prior to all that, like I'm working with, uh, uh, Levi Bates and I got my notes, like, uh, that, that young man was the bravest person I'd ever, I've ever met like hands down. So, I mean, he's super quiet. He doesn't talk much. Um, some other guys kind of rotated in and out of our fob visiting us that knew him and kind of knew what he'd been through and that initial push into, um, into Iraq. And I'm not going to tell his story or anything, but it was, it's, uh, it's got some mental fortitude to keep doing what he, what he was doing. And I never really noticed, um, anything untoward. So like, uh, you know, he's got some ticks, right? Some very, very obvious ticks and they're nothing big, uh, nothing mm-hmm. that affects who he is at all, but like, yeah, you can see like, he just is, he constantly does, but he would ask me these, this, just one question. Do we need to leave the wire on this one? Every time he would ask me that and I'd say, yep, we got, we, we do. You know, I was, I was the only JTAC for the entire battalion. And so and I was bouncing. Do I need to stay in the talk or do I need to go? Right. And as soon as I'd say, yes, we do. He'd be like, yep. Okay. Okay. And then that's all he'd say. And we'd go. So I think on my very first trip outside the wire, I think, you know, I'm sorry, my timelines kind of get up most, but I do know my first trip outside the wire, he's driving. We're in this convoy and we're going like, you just hear about, you know, this is, this is 2005. Yeah. So this is 2005 in Iraq. And so IEDs are well known and sure. we, there's three holes in the road, half in, half in the uh, asphalt, half in the dirt up ahead of me. So I'm looking at them as, as they go by. And in the middle one, there's a green wrapped box with plastic. Uh, I'm sorry, green plastic wrap box with tape kind of over it. So you know, immediately up on COVID, I'm like, hey, IED, IED, three holes in the center, uh, you know, on the right side of the road, stay away. And so that now breaks contact with the convoy. We're on one side, they're on the other. I got the commander up there in the front with me. We're on the far side of the ID, and it doesn't blow up. And the rest of the convoy is on the back side, but, you know, they're asking me, hey, what's the deal? I'm like, hey, this is what it, this is what it was. Like somehow it didn't blow up. So they're like, oh, we'll get EOD out there. I'm like, ah, I can see Apaches. Why don't we just shoot it with 30 millimeter? They're like, no, we can't do that. I'm like, uh, we can't. It's really easy. It's like, I don't know what, seven bucks a bullet. Like, so, uh, we get Air Force EOD up there. It's a senior airman thinks he's king shit. And I mean, really his job's pretty cool. We got, uh, he got to operate a $1.2 million robot. Uh, I know that cause he was bragging about it. Oh, yeah. sweet, <laughs> sweet. Um, so he, he drives a robot up there and just detonates the piss out of it. It's hilarious. Um, I mean, pieces of robot are <laughs> raining down on us. Uh, he's in tears. I'm laughing. Oh, the robot blew up. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh my just, God. <laughs> just blew up. Um, he's in tears. Uh, I'm laughing. He looks at me. He's like, he doesn't know what's so funny. I'm like, cause you just blew up a $1.2 million robot. Like <laughs> yeah. that's what's funny. Deuces were out. And so, you know, <laughs> we leave him, uh, never saw him again, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah. Continue on, get, do a lot of great stuff. Uh, the last thing I can remember with Levi is we do this huge battalion mission, and uh, this dude is just stone cold. And so, uh, like in all great movements, we're just stopped for hours at a time. Right. And we'd been stopped for however long, you know, and then all of a sudden one of the trucks, it's probably like 10 trucks ahead of us, just blows up. I mean, just gone. Uh, both individuals end up dying, um, one of them instantly and one of them back from complications. But that was the... That was the FSO in that truck. And so um, he had begged and pleaded to go on that mission with us. Jeez. And uh, because he never got to leave the wire because he was, I mean, he didn't have a job. Yeah. I'm like, why would you leave the wire? And so uh, he begged and pleaded because he didn't want to go home without being outside the wire with his team. Um, and he was in that truck. Wow. Ended up being an Italian landmine. So uh, once we got moving again, um, we take this 90 degree turn. And as we do, like we just see the side of the road, I don't know, maybe. 25 meters ahead of us is just sparking and flaming up. And so Levi Bates, man, he's driving just crazy. I mean, he just, no emotion, doesn't do anything, puts the truck in reverse and just stomps on it. 
And so, uh, cause you know, we thought, oh, I'm yelling ID, ID. Sure. Um, I thought it was trying to initiate and, uh, like he just stomps on it in reverse. <laughs> and as we're going, like I'm checking the mirror and this dude just like runs forward past us. Right. It's the, EOD, it's the Navy EOD guys. So they were, they were pretty slick, but he's like running towards it. Uh, and Levi's just hauling ass in reverse. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, there's a truck coming up. I'm like, Hey, Levi, about 40 meters, 30 meters, 20, 10, 15, five meters, Levi. And he, he don't care. Like he's getting out of the blast zone. And so he sure, hits sure. that truck and the other <laughs> truck, you know, thump, you know, we slam and he just keeps it mashed. Now he's pushing trucks back until he feels <laughs> safe. Uh, and so Jeez. we stop, uh, we stop. He looks at me. He's like, I think we're out of the, we're out of the blast. I'm like, gee, my knees, dude, you are cold blooded. <laughs> uh, it didn't up being, uh, an idea. It's just the, the power lines had fallen. Oh, uh, but okay. like, uh, so, uh, what division did is, uh, they brought me down another, another Romad, um, to get, well, to get other guys some experience. And, you know, Levi had, he'd. He never said no to nothing, but uh, right. he was he was ready maybe to chill and talk, because uh, uh, he'd seen enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we were in a square back Humvee, and everybody else had the slow backs uh, or one one threes, and we didn't have a gun. Wow. So you know, Mike Macias comes down, uh, and you know, Mike, did you ever get to meet him? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, he's a great, uh, this, great guy. <laughs> so this was at the start of his career. Uh, soon after um, his Air Force Academy time had expired. <laughs> <laughs> um great dude him and i got along i mean we're both just bloodthirsty guys uh yeah. so we have a riot um we go up and I'm, I'm about tired of the vehicles on either side of me blowing up from these ieds and so it, it, pretty much apparent like i think they're targeting us yeah. you know the weird looking humby with no gun and all the antennas uh and so the last one that i'd had it was we were right behind a 113 and the, and the truck behind us got hit and so mike's like what do i do i'm like well uh we don't have a gun so let's stay with that um, yeah, yeah. so we drive up to brigade and they got brand new slope backs with gun turrets. And so we, the greatest brigade, Alo and, uh, Rick reader, I, uh, was our NCIC up there. I'm oh, like, yeah. Hey, we're taking one of those trucks. He's like, well, we got to get it cleared. I'm like, Hey Mike, go swap our shit. <laughs> um, so he's like, Oh, we're going to need the keys. I'm like, yeah, steal them. I don't care. Right. Uh, so we did, we stole their truck. Um, cause I was, I, <laughs> I was tired of driving around in a stupid, uh, target essentially yeah uh kill us uh, yeah right so we steal their truck uh they have a message like do you guys steal our truck i'm like yeah you can come down here and get it uh, you may want a convoy because the roads ain't safe <laughs> right. like, now you're good <laughs> um so now we have that truck uh mike's just hilarious um back then you had to do like 12 to 15 page um targeting packages to strike anything well super lockdown they weren't letting us do it uh but that's how I was training Mike, like in talk duties. Um, so he wanted to do, you know, like 24 hour shifts. I'm like, hey, I mean, I don't think it's needed, but cool. Here's how it's going to work. You know, give me a call, do all these things. So he was working, you know, we, I'd worked during the day on targeting package. We just had a whole slew of them set in. Um, so I were working together. Uh, our, our, our battalion commander, uh, Colonel Wood was killed. So um, he comes out, we had two Abrams catastrophic kill on patrols, uh, two separate ones. Uh, kind of trying to respond to each other. So we got, you know, we got, you know, six guys definitely that are our KIA. And so he's rolling out in QRF. And I'm just like, Mike, we ready to go? And Mike was always ready to go. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we're ready. And so we go to get in the truck and he's like, no, nah, I need you here. I'm like, my QRF isn't going to be the only one out there. I got other patrols still out. So I need you here. I need your eyes everywhere. So we roll mm -hmm. back into the talk and uh, Colonel Wood um, gets hit by an ID after he'd got out. They hadn't cleared the area yet. So, um, so we lose him, um, you know, and just morale just like keeps taking this nerve dive. So sure. Um, after that, that was uh, they kind of took our leashes off of us. I mean, it wasn't really that restrictive on the ground per se, but when you lose a lieutenant colonel, uh, he had a line for colonel. He never found out. Um, when that happens, they there's there's some retribution that goes on, and they sure. took like uh, I think we had twelve approved strikes, and so they just lined us up for days. And we just went on this just this spree. Uh, at the time, uh, Geraldo Riviera was embedded with our battalion, and everybody hated him. <laughs> really? And so, yeah, yeah. So he goes out, and so we decide we're going to go out to an OP so we can actually do some Type Ones, um, just because. Yeah. Probably, probably not a good decision, but we're going to do it. So we have a rover and everything out there, and we're we're on this rooftop. And I had told everybody, like, like he can't come up here, and we called him Geraldo because he hated it. It's like, Geraldo can't come up here because I got this rover on. He's not putting it on TV. And he has a history of putting shit on TV that doesn't need to be there. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, yeah, 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 cool, cool. Um, so we got the rover up and going, and I can hear, like, 
commotion coming up these stairs and like I run about it back and look over and her all is coming up and like Mike throw him off the roof. Uh, and, um, you know, Mike's a big dude. Yeah. He's not tall, but I mean, he's stocky. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Throw him off. He knows he's not supposed to be up here. Like let, let his cameraman get a film of that. So Mike goes after him. <laughs> so, uh, the cameraman's trying to run interference. Mike can't get a hold of him. Like, yes, yes, this is going to happen. Like, <laughs> he's going off the hard yeah. way and the battalion commander gets up and he's like, what is, you know, the, the interim that ends up spending the rest of the time. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, dude, shouldn't be up here. And he's like, Mike, stop. <laughs> I'm like, no, Mike, don't. He's like, Mike, I am a Lieutenant Colonel. You stop. Mike's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So he goes scuttle him <laughs> off and we, we do our thing. It's like, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that been awesome. and then, you know, fast forward now, Mike has done amazing things in this. Oh yeah. Like yeah. So, uh, love it. Love it. Um, but yeah, so I think that's, yeah, I'll probably sum up like that first one. Tons of drops. Um, you know, if if you got if those aircraft got assigned to advanced four or five, like they were dropping bombs. It was great. Uh, yeah. I was one of the only JTACs in the division dropping bombs. Um, except for one time, I pop over to three three ACRs talk, and uh, I'm going to cover down while they're on their infill jammed up. Right. And so the Apaches see some guys digging IEDs in. They engage them. They run into this house. You know. Um, Basically, it was like a clown car house, like just dozens and dozens of people start flooding out of this thing. And the Apaches recognize the guys. And so, you know, they start chasing them down and, and F-15s check on for some odd reason. Maybe I called them, maybe I didn't. I can't remember to this day. Sure. And they're like, hey, we got targets inside. I'm like, no, no, you don't. You know, and I'm trying to talk to them. Okay. And the major, the XO is in the talk with us. And he's calling up to the commander. And he was like, hey, we got all these guys in sight, you know, looking for your approval to kill them. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, at all <laughs> and uh there's a speaker on fm on command and the commander's like we are two weeks away from the initial elections in this country under no way shape or form are you allowed to drop bombs on my objective <laughs> and uh not in jest the major the exo turns to me and he goes he said kill them all i'm like no we didn't and i'm in a yeah <laughs> right now <laughs> and so meanwhile like as all this is going on the f-15s are like we're in from the south looking for clearance and i'm like abort 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 like it's just a nightmare right and so the Apaches go clean it up and like, I, you know, I end up keeping anything being from you being dropped on the objective, but that F-15 squadron was calling me like the mother Teresa of all JTACs. <laughs> like, you gotta be kidding me. Like I got thousands and thousands of pounds of munitions dropped on this deployment, you know, in combat, in the talk, like everything. And now I'm the mother Teresa of all JTACs. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. It was pretty good. So <laughs> uh, while I'm over there, I get the call. Um, I've been selected for the 17th ASOS. So that was pretty awesome. Nice. Um, yeah. So I get back to betting. And, uh, you know, my, my day, my day one back is with the 17th, but I was going to go to third bat and they're gone. So, um, you know, I have just that one conventional deployment, you know, uh, work with the ASOC a bunch. I'm by myself through the whole time. And now I step in and I'm with the 17th with you guys. You're there. Brandenburg is there. Uh, I think he's running things. Um, yeah. And that's really it really, uh, really kind of a shadow group there. Um, so yeah. I don't get in part of any training, um, you know, uh, cause nobody's there. <laughs> so, right, right. Um, you know, just nothing. And then all of a sudden you guys kind of pull me aside and like, Hey, uh, RD is surging into Afghanistan and, uh, we want you to pick up a team to go. And it's like, mm. I mean, and who in the right mind, regardless how, well, I hadn't been pretty dumb to say yes on that one hindsight. Right. <laughs> um, but I was super excited. You're like, Hey, and the deal is if you just, as long as you don't kill the wrong person, we're going to leave you on that team. I'm like, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm not going to turn down that deal. Sure. And then we go out for, uh, you know, my quick top off. Uh, and you're there, and I had never had any experience with this off low call for fire or the AC-130 call for fire. Like, I'm trying to pass this nine line. And you're like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> mm, it's a thing. And you're like, yeah, maybe you should read a book. <laughs> like, okay, okay. So th I think that was your first indication that I was pretty stinking cherry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I like to think of it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's been years. I haven't really talked to anybody about this other than kind of my own like inflection. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm assuming I was just the best of a lot of bad decisions to send on that. <laughs> so it's kind of I, yeah. I don't know where I don't know where that came from. I think it, it had a lot to do with you being tabbed and you you know just getting back from that deployment. And you know I I, I, I we we thought highly of you. So I don't think and plus that a lot of. That uh, that interaction with Brandenburg probably had a lot to do with it. And we're like, oh, they're, they're, well, I spent the next five months in Afghanistan uh, disillusioning you from all of that. <laughs> so uh, I remember like, and so I didn't, you know, I knew tax ags. Uh, I did not know so ags. Uh, yeah. the, you know, so I had no idea like any of this. Uh, 
uh, I didn't even know I should have asked questions, but you guys were like, Hey, Desi's over there. Like he's going to give you a handover. I'm like, sweet. I'm like, okay, worst comes to worst. Like, what if we don't see each other? I'm like, ain't going to happen, but <laughs> he'll write a book. Like he'll, he'll have a handover notes, everything. You're going to be okay. Yeah. So I meet this, I meet this team. Um, I have no idea what team it was. Uh, Aaron Totten Lancaster was the assistant team leader. I can't remember who the the leader, the team leader was, but yeah, great to, yeah. dudes all around. Wonderful. Um, oh, yeah. I fly in a country. Uh, I just remember taking off from Philadelphia, um, taking the Ambien. <laughs> like 15 <laughs> minutes later, like, hey, air refueler's kinked. Got to land back in Philadelphia. I'm like, this is going to get interesting. That sucks. Uh, so that was kind of <laughs> funny. Uh, we get into country, and as we're on those little tiny buses going to – you know, the hooch like Des is on uh, a bench because he's going to get on the plane. I just get off of, and he's just giving oh, me the man. double birds with a big smile on his face. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. Let's get that book so I can figure out what's going on. So we get into the hooch and the only thing in the book is a hand drawn picture of a jet. I'm like, Oh <laughs> oh no. So at one point I'm in a helicopter and it dawns on me who I'm sitting next to. And it's um, some Navy seals, uh, the guys that, you know, that we work with in that environment. Right. And so I didn't know they existed outside of video games and Tom Clancy books. <laughs> right. Which is lucky that I really don't have any shame. And I'll be the first one to say, I'm kind of retarded. Let's maybe try to stop that right now and not yeah. make it worse. And so I was talking to uh, Aaron and I was like, hey, uh, this is kind of a funny fact that I learned today. And he was like, why? I was like, mm, I mean, am I supposed to know these things? He was like, well, when you get read in, I was like, read in. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we did that. Right. Um, <laughs> oh, the yeah, team that I was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that happened then at that point, it was great. <laughs> um, so then the team I was on was going to get split up. Right. Uh, Cause Maddie was over there with his team. Mm -hmm. And so his team was going to stay a team. And then my team was going to go and kind of facilitate other areas right. but beforehand we do several things and so i'm trying to remember which mission was first because it all blends together in my head uh i think i can't remember how it all went down but his team was on and like some of the guys in his team is just nuts right um i find out real quick i'm like like echelons deep in the layer of like primary jtags right. so uh care maybe the guy's name is jared maybe it's Jeremy. i can't remember the the cct controller's name uh, out of the 24th mm -hmm. we were supporting his team right like that's all you got to say man that's your team like i, I get it like <laughs> right uh and he comes and he's, he's kind of awkward i was like hey man spit it out i already know what he's gonna say and i'm good with it man I, I mean i understand that but he you know he's never met me he's like hey man i don't know how to say it, but this is my team uh, and I'm the JTAC. I'm like, yeah, straight man. What do you need me to do? And he's like, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, if you don't mind, it would be good if you could like monitor these nets. I'm like, I'll be the best freaking RTO you ever seen, man. Right. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> right. So I like, really thank mean God to... that you're <laughs> yeah. taking control. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that was probably like the only thing I could do there was control cast. <laughs> I just didn't know how to request it. <laughs> so, sure. Sure. Not in that world. I was like, yeah, I'll call the ASOC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what it really meant is like I just free to like walk around the objective, I guess. I don't know. And yeah. so I remember walking by a door and there was one of the RD guys, and I don't remember anybody's name who it was, but I saw that I saw it go down. It was crazy. And I've heard Maddie's hand to hand story. Mm, like yeah. so it's crazy. And I didn't know that, but and I have no idea what time frame this thing happened. But as I'm looking like past our guy into the room, some poor Afghani is just getting whooped inside that room <laughs> and so uh this dude walks in and taliban dude's down his knee, knees just just pounding on this guy and so he wrenches his head back and just blasts him right and the guy kind of explodes <laughs> oh man teeth and blood everywhere and i just oh. remember he looks up at him and grins and i'm like mm, man that's weird yeah. and then he just jumps on him right like you know like a leech just is all over him and i'm just like standing there like nope 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 <laughs> Like there's there's no clean shot. Yeah, yeah. And so the guy's like all over his M4, and so a magazine hits the ground, right? And so he gets gets the guy off and kind of slings his M4 to the side, right? It's still tied off, and he's got his nine mil, and he's trying to go it. And so now the guy's all over his nine mil, right? Yeah, yeah. And so like there's no shots, like nobody's shooting, and then like a nine millimeter magazine hits the floor. I'm like, okay. Jeez. So you know, obviously this guy's getting rid of ammo because he doesn't know who's going to end up with this weapon. Sure. And and I mean, it was I, I'm fairly certain it was not an accident that both these things have been stripped. You know, I'm just waiting for it for a shot. And so the guy knocks him off. The pistol like hits the floor, and the Taliban jumps on the pistol, but the guy still has his M4 with one round in it. 
Mm. And he's right there. And he just whap. Uh, oh. And ends it. Leans down. Gets his pistol. You know, racks everything. Puts rounds and everything. Holsters his pistol. And then he turns. He's like, hey, what's up? And he walks out the door. And I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just like... You're like what I'm I not sure here? if this just happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> so... Uh, some of the other guys on our team, because like, we'd still, you know, was a full team, and like on a different area of the director, they're like trading, like they're in the building, and Taliban's on top of the roof with the thatch roof, and they're like throwing grenades at each other, like back and forth, like picking them up with grenades, like just, just nuts. I'm just like, what the fuck have I got myself into? <laughs> right. Maybe a little much, right? So uh, we end up getting split up, go about our business, and uh, I'd gotten out and I got to do a little bit of training with that team that I was on. And, um, we did some shoot house stuff and that's the first, like the first big time I really showed my ass is, uh, that those guys like to, 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 uh, have their weapons pointed up. Right. Mm. And my very minimal training, which is basically nothing like mine was down. So that's what I was comfortable with. So now they're up, uh, and it's live fire in these shoot houses and the, you know, their team stands up on top to kind of grade and critique you. And I'm just like, uh, we're walking in here live, like flagging everybody. That's a little insane. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I go in, I do my thing pull up on one of the dummies and click, right? Obviously, because I didn't charge my weapon. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, barrel poke, draw my nine, put a couple rounds in it, move yeah. about business. And uh, man, I was so, so mortified. But <laughs> kind of good thing we got a little bit of that training because we go in and they love to walk for some odd reason. Oh, yeah. Like five miles as the bird flies. Right? Sure. We're, in, we're in an 8K off the objective. And so we walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. And we get there and the plan was to have whatever Ranger Bat was in country at the time. They were going to, as soon as we initiated, they were going to then isolate the objective. So the whole team I was on, like, they just wanted to climb ladders over the walls and just like shoot people over the walls. <laughs> so like, Hey, it is in, it is imperative. We have as many guns in the courtyard as possible. It's like the, it's the linchpin of this operation. They just kept saying, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe all, all of you shouldn't climb walls. <laughs> like if that's what's so important, but nope, nope. So, um, the ass and trash is going to go in through the gate. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, it's a team member. And then their senior NCO, which apparently is not a team member um, per se. Should have been. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know what kind of dynamic you guys had going. But. Yeah, it's like they're, yeah. So it's kind of like uh, how our first sergeants are part of our units, but maybe not part of our unit. Type. Oh, Anyways, so it wasn't the team sergeant. It was like a maybe no, the detachment it, it, ops it guy was, or something. Or It was yeah. like their first sergeant. Oh, okay. Um, and they didn't have a high opinion of him. Uh, and then I was oh, number really? three. Oh, no, not at all. What and year I was, was number this? three. Uh, 2005. Okay, I'm trying to think. Who no, no, we're not talking on the RD side. This is, this is our our Navy on side. the Navy side. Yeah, yeah. So it's just gotcha, me and like gotcha. one of the RD okay. guys attached to this team. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So you know, we got a team member up front. Uh, <laughs> this guy they don't like me, who uh, they're soon not to like, I think, in the future. And then Magilla Gorilla is behind me, <laughs> and so all I know is I gotta got it. I gotta get in this gate, and I gotta get in the fight. Like, and I'm ready to go. Like, I'm not yeah. there, JTAC. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. And so they initiate. Stuff blows up. We go in. I take one step, and then I just run into the back of the guy in front of me. Right, <laughs> uh, everything gets bottled up, and I feel from my back all of my weight comes off my feet. Now my soles were probably touching the ground. Yeah. Um, but I feel myself get jerked back and then slammed forward, um, which knocks number two <laughs> out of the way. Yeah. I then get jerked to the right and tossed through the gate. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm kind of running and, and, and I come up, right. And I'm still trying to do my job, but I've just been used as a battering ram. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and now I'm in the gate. So I've got number ones, you know, he's covered down to his sector. I kind of pick up, take mine. And then number four, like he's behind me. And there's only one guy left on the objective at this point. Um, he was laying on a cot and he get us off, he got off the cot, uh, picked up his man robe to put it over his head. And he's like, not reacting that everybody else around him is no longer, uh, alive. Uh, right. he's just like super chill and so when he picks up his man dress there was an ak-47 on the cot and so like that initiated like the end of him Jeez. so we get through the objective and uh, the rangers come in they isolate uh and they brought carl gustav with them um, who's a great member of the team and the only reason i bring that up is because they decided that they're going to attack us on this objective i have no part in this entire fight because we are isolated by yeah. the most violent fighting force on the planet and they right, do their right. job, and Carl is talking the entire night. It's nuts. <laughs> uh, I didn't find out until quite a bit later, but Adam Benson is the JTAC with them. Oh, and cool. He, he's controlling the AC-130 the entire time. Uh, some of the guys you had on here, then the questions I've asked, like, hey, what's the difference between all the different groups and stuff? I was like, well, I think, obviously, 
you're going to tend to gravitate towards who you were raised with. And obviously we were raised with the Rangers, so they do it right. Uh, and I yeah. recognize that, but I will say that the level of planning that I was accustomed to, um, both in my tech P world and then, you know, a little bit with the Rangers is well and above anybody else I've ever seen. Yeah. So that bleeds into things like, hey, our exfil plan is going to be the same as our as the Rangers landing on the X <laughs> infill plan, which I'm just like, mm, doesn't sound right to me, but whatever. What do I know? Like these, you know, Tom Clancy has taught me all I need to know about these guys. <laughs> right. So as we're coming off, they instead of walking five miles, they just go ahead and reestablish that LZ right there on the X. The problem is there's room for one Chinook on dry, and then the rest is just like flooded rice paddies or something. I mean, it's flooded. Yeah. And so my chalk goes in. I'm coming out. There's three chalks that need to come off. So it's going to be one chalk of Rangers, one chalk of us. And then the third chalk of Rangers is going to sit on the ground. And that's Adam's with them. And so as those helicopters come in, I mean, they've been fighting all night on the perimeter. It's been awesome to listen to. Um, yeah. And I'm just monitoring, right? Because I've got two like wildly capable JTACs in front of me. So I'm not getting right. on the mic. And so as our helicopters come in, they were waiting. And it just all hell breaks loose. And so I've got, I don't know, 60 meters to run through mud. <laughs> and, uh, I can run forever, but I'm not strong. And so I fell down probably every three feet. <laughs> so Jen, I'm just trying to get through this mud. I'm trying to monitor on uh, on the strike because the AC-130 is just lighting shit up everywhere. RPGs are streaking over my head. I see tracers over. And I just remember running so long that I stopped being scared. I'm like, yeah. man only thing exposed on my back because i got a radio and i got plates like i'm gonna get shot in the ass and that's gonna be embarrassing right and so i start giggling and i finally get to the helicopter <laughs> and aaron's like man man you barely made it we're not gonna leave you i was like oh, well, i'm here now so i'm like the last guy to tie in i'm sitting on my butt you know strapped in got you know my m4 between my legs like you do mm -hmm. and we come off the objective um you know, I can't imagine how many rounds are in those you know, those sealable fuel blivets on the sides of those. But it was, just, it was a little hairy. Well, the other helicopter got shot down. Oh, my God. And so it crashes. And I'm thinking, like, okay, so um, what are we going to do here? I know, and, I, and I'm monitoring everything. Like, I got it all. Like, I'm, I'm hearing it all. I'm like, okay, so I just got to wait for word. I got to know who's on strike. I got to figure it out because uh, the, the other JTACs just landed on the ground. Like, I have no idea if, who's who's who right now benson's right. still on the lz like he's good yeah. so i know there's a whole chock full of really really angry people to respond and that's kind of the first word i got was like hey we're we're waving off we'll go like they're gonna recover it and then they're like hey no we're gonna go back in and we're gonna secure this thing I'm like sweet like let's yeah. do it <laughs> right in front of me is the uh is the 240 gunner like just getting it ah, man it was awesome like and that's all i see you know <laughs> not it's under nods obviously and you know the back is open and I just see the silhouette of this guy just, I mean, talk about America. <laughs> and so we circle back around and then like all of a sudden we just drop out of the sky. And I don't know how far we fell, but I know for a fact when you fall through dead air, because an RPG exploded beneath us and, you know, ate all the air underneath our, our Chinook. Them rotors, when they hit live air through that dead space, it feels like you hit the ground. Really? So, uh, you know, and I'm kind of laid back on my, on my rucksack, you know, my feet are out front and I got my M4 in between my legs and we just slam into the ground, just wham. And I saw the gunner. It was like, like a marionette. Somebody just cut his strings, you know, cause he's standing up and when, you know, when we caught air again, I thought we crashed, Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then we keep moving. And so, you know, I kind of found out later what was going on. Well, I mean, he just crumpled. Um, and I have no idea. And I, and I'm right there. So all the things are going through my mind. Like this is a dirty situation. Um, super hot LZ. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I do know that our, our gunner on our rear is no longer defending the aircraft. And so as I start to lean up and I'm getting kind of up and trying to get my feet underneath me so I can grab my, my hook and I'm like trying to think through how am I going to, how am I going to get to that gun without falling out of the back when I unhook, <laughs> this gunner pops up like a jack in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it knocked him out a little bit, but when he does, he like, he just straight kicks the barrel of my weapon, which is kind of down and it just smashes up into my face and my nose oh. and everything goes bright white. Um, and it never resolves into green and I can't figure out what's going on. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not out of it. I'm not knocked out, but it's just black now. <laughs> so I'm just like, and I can't find my nods. 
And so uh, I hear over the radio, hey, we're not going to do this. And so we go back. And what had happened was uh, it didn't break my nose, but there was blood everywhere. Like, oh. it was bad, bad. <laughs> um, it didn't release my nods. It broke my nods. So, like, the the plastic that's built into the nods where the screw is, where all the yeah. mounts screw to, like, that was completely broke off. And so it was just hanging somewhere on my body. Oh, geez. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I had to get some new <laughs> nods. I think uh, we talked about that later on in my deployment because you called me. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we get done and uh, we have zero casualties. So we get to this airfield. And so like we're waiting because now we got one Chinook down and we got two, two, two chocks full with one available aircraft. Uh, no casualties. Right. Nice. The entire chalk I go in, go into this room, they're eating like cookies and cakes and juices, right? And so <laughs> I had not outfitted myself well, um, and I was pretty dehydrated. And they're like, hey, you stay out here and keep us updated. I'm like, cool, man, I can do that. Uh, bring me some bring me some juice. Right, Nobody right. does. <laughs> so I'm just, it's just, now it's daylight, it's blazing. And as they start to come in, like, this guy's getting car- carried off in the stretcher. I'm just like, uh, I thought we didn't take any casualties. Like, like what's going on? They're like, mm, no, that guy, he's a heat he cat. I'm like, I'm dying right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because you guys completely forgot me out here. Like, this son of a bitch. Uh, so that was really the only casualty we took. Uh, it wasn't one of our army brethren. <laughs> so if that oh. doesn't. So uh, we go back. I, I cramped terribly. Um, you know, Aaron's like, what's your deal? Because, uh, you know, my hands were just like cramping up. Like, I didn't sleep at all because the tops of my quads were cramped. So I'd curl them into the bottoms. And like, I just walked all day until you know, chugging water. He's like, why didn't you go to the bear rescue me and get a bag? I'm like, oh, we can do that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, other things you don't know. You, yeah. yeah just, nobody just told nutty. you about. Just nutty. So um, we get out, we go out, uh, me and Aaron go out and we're, we're attached um, out in this, just this safe house somewhere. And we start running these missions and like, it's just uh, my integration is not real well. And I don't, you know, um, I'm, I'm not blaming anybody but myself. Uh, that level, regardless of how I felt about how they plan, like that level should not have to deal with somebody that just doesn't know anything. Yeah. Like we kind of set you up for failure on that one. That was, that was our bad. Yeah. And I, you know, and I've got absolutely zero complaints about the way you guys run things. I mean, that, that place was a blast. You guys were amazing. I loved every bit of it. Um, and that's where I kind of said, hey, the best of a lot of bad decisions. So you know, I don't know who, whether you could have sent, but you had to send me. Yeah. Um, so at one point, uh, you know, we had an eight o'clock meeting in the, in the morning. So at eight o'clock, you know, 7.55, whatever. I'm rolling in and like the whole team's in there and they just start, you know, I'm like, where you been? Blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, uh, what the hell are you talking about? Um, and I'm looking at the other clock. It's eight o'clock. Like I, I didn't fuck up. And they're like, we've been in here playing on this TST and like blah, 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 blah. I was like, uh, do you think to maybe to ask me or like to come get me like i i literally sleep like 15 yards like right there yeah and they're like yeah whatever you know we are we got a10s they're gonna come in with hellfires and we're gonna do this i'm like mm, i don't think that's gonna work and they just <laughs> dogpile on me again and like the team leader's like i'm a jtac and i could do this and just shut your mouth to do your job and like his team members like yeah blah 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 blah, blah. i was like hey hey man cool a10 show up with the hellfires i'll control the shit out of them I'm like i don't know what to tell you right. so i go about my business and you know <laughs> later that day he's like hey did you know a10s don't shoot hellfires i'm like mm, yeah i'm a jtac you dick uh, yeah. like, well, you know, I've been on for like a month. I'm like, well, yeah, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I get it. Like, our dynamics not great, but all the things that I'm lacking, like, I'm still a JTAC, and I'm really good at it. So maybe you should do this. Uh, so I won that <laughs> battle. I lost the entire war. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at one point, we go and we do another stinking like five mile infill, and we're gonna hit this island. And obviously, there's a river on both sides, east and west, because it's an island. Mm, you're right. Um, you've seen a map, right? You know what islands look like. <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. All right, so we're all on the same page now. <laughs> so we get there after like hours of walking, and lo and behold, there's a river. And so we just sit there and like, hey, what are we doing? Like, so we turn around and walk all the way back. I'm like, mm, oh my got God. surprised by a river when we were going to take down an island. Uh, so we do it again, and we walk all the way in. And uh, you may not believe this, JD, but um, the river was still there. What? Yep. Wow. Right. Surprised me, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so we don't cross it and we walk all the way back. I'm like, man, I am going to be a beast under this rucksack when I'm done with this thing. So the next one we do is uh, we're gonna wait, do wait, wait. Heat- so what was the yeah, deal? Yeah, yeah. Like, what man, but- I don't know because I'd already kind of not gotten along with this with, <laughs> with the team that much, so you know, like, like, I'm just trying to do my best on what I can do, and yeah, they, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they weren't gonna ask me my opinion on infills and like whether the river was going to disappear or not. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know to this day. I just know so that amazing. like, like super long walks. So there's still water. So, uh, so then, then the third try is we're going to do a uh, Hilo info. And so for some odd reason, the 
the flight path took us from the south tip to the north tip of the island. And the island had two bridges on it, both exiting the east side of the island, one on the north side, one on the south side. And so our, our plan was to infill in the north, clear south, and then exfill across the southern bridge to the east. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we fly pretty low level from the south to the north tip of this island. And like, I'm at the, I'm at the, at the ramp, right? And so I can see out and they're like, there's kind of guys around me and the, the, the commander's right behind me. And like, like flares are just coming up. I'm like, Hey, uh, red flares. You think that's early warning? He's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> mm, I think it is. Well, I was wrong. They were actually highlighting us so they could shoot at us. It was awesome. Oh. <laughs> um, so they do this. Um, and like RPGs are coming up. I'm like, Ooh, not such the greatest place I've ever been in. And so we start to come down into land. I'm like, hey, uh, we're compromised. Like, you should probably call this off. Like, everything about this screams not good. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get a hold of command so they can make the decision. Like, I thought you're the you ground commander. Were, yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm baffled. I'm like, you need to make this decision because that's what we're getting into. And it's just RPGs and, 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 uh, uh, tracers just going off. Yeah. We still start going down and uh the guy next to me is on, you know, he's a he's a seal and like he just keeps checking his chamber. And I'm like like I know for a fact I, I charge my weapon. And this guy keeps checking it. I'm like, "Okay, he's nervous." I'm like, I, "I'm not going to do it." Like, man, I know for a fact I <laughs> charged my weapon like and like by the seventh time he's just like, eh, eh. "I'm like, oh." And I look, yeah, 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 I yeah. <laughs> and so we go all the way into brownout, and like I can see the difference between the tracers and the RPG, like fire, like screaming by us. I'm like, here we go, and then behind me, it was like, no, nah, we're canceling, we're canceling, and then we, oh we take off. I'm like, oh, that's that's a good idea there. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, just interesting. It was just could have been bad to me. Yeah. So then uh, I go and. Um, since we'd gotten split up, like all these different groups, OGAs, uh, you know, some host nation, like really amazing forces, like they save all these missions for me uh, so then they can have air support um, mm -hmm. when they go. And so one of the times I was going out with OGA and uh, it was just me. I was the only American military there for obvious reasons. So we can have CAS and um, we're going to go for X amount of time. I don't know how long we're going to be out, but I load everything up, do all my radio checks and we get in our Hiluxes. It's, you've talked about them on the show. Yeah, they are amazing. It's why we all want Hiluxes these days. We love them, yeah. Uh, all right, right. And, you know, these these were the upgraded ones, uh, you know. <laughs> and so we get in, and they've got um, they've got a rover system in, all this good stuff. We're loaded up with, um, you know, MREs and everything. I think we're going to be gone for, you know, several days, whatever it was. And we're going to go check out some of the refugee camps, right? Uh, earn some goodwill. That's kind of what it was. So we weren't going mm -hmm. into combat or anything. Um, just they just needed some cover. So... Um, I don't ever hear anything from the fire's desk at all. And so, you know, and I'm troubleshooting everything. You had taught me how to build a Coke can sat antenna. And that is probably the only satellite antenna I've ever used that has never failed. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even remember. I mean, do you remember you teaching us that? No, I don't. Oh it's... my God. You're the one that taught us that. And uh -huh. I have taught every single room that I've had that's ever worked for me. It's like, I don't know why we use all this stuff. You can make one out of a Coke can and it works. <laughs> right, right. And I've done it everywhere in the world and it works. So I'm like, I'm, a, nice. I'm even doing that. And like, I just can't get anything. And so I'm like, okay, well, I mean, the, the 117 that's running the rover, and like that's hooked up to all that stuff. It doesn't have our fills in it. And so I got guard, <laughs> like, like if something goes down. Yeah. And so um, we came back from that. Nothing ever happened. Like nothing really happened the whole deployment for me, ex except just drama. And so at some point uh, I get that you're on the phone and you, and you want to talk to me. And so I had <laughs> had an interaction with the CCT that was with the Cansoft guys there. Uh, and it was completely positive interaction. The dude was coming out of England. You know, I was like, "Hey, here's what I do. Here's my capabilities. Here's who I can. Here's who I can reach out to. Whatever you need, you know, as we support you, you just let me know. Um, you know, and I'll do whatever you want. You know." And then we talked about England. So then I get this phone call from you, and you're like, "Hey, we need to talk." I'm like, "Yeah, shoot. You know, I know I hadn't been doing real well." And you're like, "You broke your nods. You broke your 117, and then you're showing your ass to the CCT guys." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Like. Like some of this is new to me. I need to process it. And like you were telling me how uh, I got in this argument with the CCT guy, and I was like, "Hey, I'm the you know I'm the primary JTAC, and like this is my mission and everything." I was like, "That's not what happened." And uh, you know, and I kind of understood that you know, some of the other stuff that I was running into, my credibility uh, wasn't uh, real strong. Um, but we made it through it. Um, you know, I don't even where'd I get the where'd I get the bad poop from? Like, who, so I... I asked you that, and you wouldn't tell me. And uh, I had to narrow it down to either maybe you knew somebody on the team, like you had had worked with some of the guys that I was a 
attached to, or maybe, oh, okay. uh, or maybe my team that I was on made the phone call. Uh, right. He didn't admit to it. He was a pretty straight shooter, and like, and that was a really, really negative uh, interaction for me at that time. Um, but again, I like it's really hard to get me down. Like, just keep kicking me out of here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so um, I think. I, I don't know how I, you know, and I'll leave like, like what kind of happened, but it did have an incredibly positive outlook. Cause I think uh, one of the guys that was there with me kind of maybe listened and then kind of understood maybe how that interaction ultimately played out between you and I. And then okay. he really stepped in to be like, Hey, like, let's start doing some of these things. And it was great. You know, kind of after oh, that good. So, well, I'm glad yeah. it worked out. Yeah. So, um, that was pretty good. I, ca- I came back home. You picked me up from the airport. I sat in the conference room with you and Brandy and the commander. And you're like, hey, you're not going to R&D. You know, I don't care about this. I was like, hey, can I get some real feedback? And Brandy just was like, no. Ah, ah. Was like, don't <laughs> argue with us. I'm like, okay, not arguing. I'll be gone now. Uh, and I got linked in with Seco, which is phenomenal, obviously. I mean, you, you know, you've done your time there. That's like the best. Yeah. Um, so had a great, uh, and to this, I can't remember if I did three or four deployments with Seco. Um and we went to I we went to basically Baghdad every time. I think yeah. it was three. I did three deployments with them, and so two of them was with the same team. You know, a couple of different ground force commander was awesome. Um, you know, I got a few stories from that. Mostly though, uh, I think yeah, we'll talk about the garrison after this. But uh, <laughs> my weapons squad leader uh, Mortensen. Like, I don't know how that guy's still kicking, but he made it through our time, but you know, we're working with Seco. Nothing was crazy. I never got into like huge firefights with everything. I mean, anything that was about to happen, they had me there and I just took care of it before it was a thing. But there was a couple of times, uh, one of them, uh, we had went in to grab a couple, three guys had went into some reeds and bedded down. So our partner force was like, they're going to go take the objective. And they like kicked us over to take down these three guys. And so it was in the reeds and we're talking like those 10 foot reeds, yeah. you know, just uh, you can't see anything and we're on these trails. And so me, the commander and the RTO kind of, we secure our route out, our six, while the, the rest of the guys, Seacoke like goes up around and tries to get in on these three guys where we know they're at. And so they're following this trail in and I hear over the radio, like, Hey, we have eyes on two individuals. They're armed. We're going to engage. And I'm like, trying to like, Hey, there's three, there's three. And I never get it out. And they engage these two guys. And as they do, you know, pop, 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 like <laughs> PKM just opens up. Uh, and it's, it's like right there. Uh, so yeah. it's super loud. I would say that this team, like they kind of went up and around, they're probably like 10 yards from me when they engage these guys. And then like, that's about where the PKM is, was as well. So it just goes nutty. Um, got AC 130 overhead and they're having trouble seeing anything. Cause all I just see is flashes, right? So yeah. they can see, like they can see IR bodies, but now it's just flashes everywhere. And so I'm trying, I'm like, Hey, stand by. I need to get some information guys. Just chill, just chill. Um, and I get on the inner team trying to get a hold of Mort. And I know, like, I'm conflicted. Like, I don't know if he's alive, to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know who's alive. Um, and I know he's in a firefight if he is alive. But I've also, I got to do my job, um, either A, with my assets, or I'm support by fire, right? Right. And so, like, I'm trying to, like, call him a little bit, a little bit. And uh, I need to know. So I find out he's alive. Um, and I can hear in his voice, like, he's conflicted, like, to talk to me or to do his job, right? Because he's point <laughs> yeah. man. And I can tell this, but... I can tell the difference between gun, like M4 flashes I can see, and I can see strobe, and I can see the fully automatic PKM flashes. Like, I can tell the difference between all this, but I need to confirm that Mort is still the closest, like still in point man, and it's his strobe. (laughs) So uh, it's funny looking back because everything worked out in our favor. But he does end up confirming, and there's uh, a lot of colorful language because uh, uh, he didn't think that I needed all the information I had uh, that I was trying to pull. And so he tells me, he's like, I'm throwing a grenade, right? And I, I got to throw it past him. So he throws it, and it lands about 40 yards away. No, I mean, not 40 yards, but you know, 30 yards or so. I mean, he just chucks it, right? Sure. And so the, the AC-130 is like, hey, I picked that up. That's about 35 meters away from friendly forces. I'm like, great follow from that grenade back to friendly forces 35 meters that's where the enemy is <laughs> and they're like oh we don't get it i'm like yeah fair enough we're all just one big pile of uh, screwed here so just monitor and they're like okay yeah. and at that point um you know we got the we got the fully auto uh, m4s and so the only thing i can do because i can't see anything but i do know where our, our lines are i i mm-hmm. am rock solid on where friendlies is so i take my 10 to 15 degrees off them i tell the commanders like hey i'm gonna put down covering fire here's here's more with the strobe Here's my 10 to 15 degrees. You're my backstop. You make sure I don't get into friendlies. He's like, got it. So I start dumping full auto mags into the 
into where the, the, the PKM flashes are. And the way I ran is I ran with one of my weapon, uh, three in my kit. Okay. So I've only got like 120 rounds. Right. And so I dump one, two, three, put my last mag in, go to semi-auto. And now, now I'm looking for the RTO because he's got, <laughs> he's got rounds. Uh, yeah. And I'm just killing it. Uh, and he's curled up in the fetal position at my feet. So they often don't make like your best rangers, the RTOs. Right, right. <laughs> and so he wasn't. Um, and so I start kicking him so I can get his mags and my toe starts hurting because I was kicking his plate. So I find his, find his kidney and I just give him a boot. <laughs> like uncurls like a pill bug, strip his mags, put a couple more uh, full auto mags down, and then the firing kind of stops. I'm not saying I hit the dude. I don't know who hit the dude. I wasn't the only one firing, but kind of gives us a, a breather, and so we all fall back. Uh, we fall back about 40 meters away. I do a danger close with 40 millimeter. Um, I kind of freak out the ground commander because I go like like robot mode when I put my when I put my call for fire out. Like there's no sure. mistakes. Like it's you know I go from uh, emotions and you know because emotions can be used on the mic. It's great. Uh, but I, I don't, I guess I don't, I don't feel personally that they're, they're good for their call for fighters. So saturate right. the area with 40 danger close. And then I was like, Hey, we going to SSE and the commander's like, nah, we're just getting out of here. <laughs> so I get up on sat for the first time since this whole thing kind of kicked off. And, uh, Robbie trust is the ALO phenomenal ALO. Like he, him and I were like, I mean, we deployed every time together until he got replaced. Yeah. Uh, and so he's like, Hey, mass cast, uh, you know, helicopters on the way for casualties. Like, give me an update. I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. What are you talking about? Like zero <laughs> casualties. Right? Yeah. And so we come out of there and he shows me this video and basically you see kind of us three standing there and you kind of see the, you know, you can't see, uh, the three guys in the, in the reeds. I just knew where they were from a, a grid where we know where they walked in. And then you see a trail with single file Rangers going down and you can see their muzzle flashes on this recording of where they engage those two guys. And then the PKM just opens up right on them. Oh, and to this day, I don't know how he didn't hit anybody. I mean, it, oh it was it was a five second burst losing the entire assault force. I have no idea, yeah. uh, no idea. Um, but that's wow. what they were watch, watching in the talk, and so they just launched mass cas. I'm like, wait, wait, don't cancel those, like, because we're supposed to walk back to our field. Like, like, <laughs> I don't want to walk back to the HL. Just send them here, and we'll we'll ride home. And so uh, instead of having to walk back to the HLZ, that's we just rode the we just rode all smart, the mass smart. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, man, and then Mortensen again. Uh, <laughs> we get tasked to go clear this uh, little outbuilding. Um, so we got the dog with us. Uh, we're like we're stacked on this dilapidated building. There's like a shed behind it. Like Delta's doing its thing. Like wherever they're doing their thing. Like just it's, it's just fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, we send the dog in, and we hear like this percussion cap. Sounds like a like one of those little pop firecrackers. We're like, what the hell? Mm. And the dog comes back out, and it's just dancing around the dog. And the dog handler's like, he's been shot. And we're like, well, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, through and through through its back, right? Like, its back crap. leg. And so we're like, done. And so they're on like my left side kind of stacked on the door and I'm all the way on the other side. Cause I'm just like peeking around like, Oh, there's a back door to this thing. So I'm like, I'll cover it down. I'm like, we don't need cast. Like they're all doing other things. And so Mortensen, obviously it's weapon squad leader. So he's got point again and he's got cover and he's got his off hand on the weapon the way he was at the door. And he turns and he calls up to get a grenade. And as he's doing that, the dude comes running out. And so Morton starts to engage and like, all I know is there's just a loud explosion, like fireball, everything crazy. Uh, lots of oh, is the guy rigged? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh. yeah, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I have no idea. Like at, at the time I'm, I'm just sort of saying we're, I mean, we're, we're within 10, 15 meters of this building. It's, I mean, it's right there. Yeah. And so where I'm at, I can only see the back door, which hadn't collapsed or anything. And so I'm still covering it down. I'm, I'm just processing like what's going on, what's going on, pick back up on, you know, the net, you know, and uh, I just hear yelling from behind me, like not from my team, but like coming from the main objective. And as I turn, two guys are running like towards like the back door and kind of me and I've, I've got cover and they're like, get back, get back. And then like out of the back door, this, this, this man, that's 100% on fire. Like not a little bit of clothing, nothing like he's just head to toe, just flames, like, oh. like, like Marvel character, like flames <laughs> comes running out. And so like I, I engage and he goes flying backwards. I'm like, no way that happened. Well, these two other guys are, are coming from the main objective. Like they're running at him too. And they engage and like they're throwing grenades and tell me to get back. I'm just like, yeah, I'm behind a wall and you're still <laughs> running. And, uh, Basically, what ended up happening on the front side is uh, as Mortensen engaged, this guy hit him in the stomach. And so as he bent over, like the blast went down. 
you know, blew out his eardrums, all that good stuff. And so we go back and like, everybody's getting awards and like purple hearts are being given out. And these two guys are getting purple hearts. I'm like, Oh, what, you know, what, what happened to them? They're like, Oh, they got fragged during that you know, explosion. I'm like, mm, I think I know how they got fragged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, Mort healed up, you know, blew out his eardrums. He got another, another purple heart for that shit. Like this is crazy that he's still there. So, um, but that's, a, I mean, you say it's crazy. He's still there. That's a testament to those guys. I mean, yeah. like, you know, there's so been so many guys like you that have got on, come on here and talked about the Rangers that we support. They're just like otherworldly, man. They're like just I don't want to say superhuman, but almost like that, you know. They're just yeah. like they just keep going and going and they're just total badasses. Yeah, just nothing stops them. It's just crazy. Right. And um but there's no other option. I mean I remember like Brandenburg was our NCIC. Like Yeah. Like he, he lived it and he right. he like I don't ever remember that like there being a decision that you made to act like that. It was just that was just it. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, we did another, we, we were isolating an objective. So some pre-assault fires, we go up to our OP. Um, and like, there's a, there's one guy still there on our OP. Uh, he's not alive, but like, I have no idea where the second guy is. So, like, we're worried the whole time, you know, mm-hmm. this guy like crawl off. Like, is he going to reattack us or whatever? Um, end up doing like three medevacs out of that one for, for, our, for our partners. Uh, one of them thrown through in his shoulder. Uh, the dog had to get medevaced and then one of the enemy had medevacs. So, yeah, like 500 meters away for that <laughs> scene. So they're like, hey, Ross. I'm like, uh, we're there for a little while longer. Um, the sun starts to come up. Um, and that's when we found that first guy. Uh, there was two of them at the, at the OP we were at on a gun. There was only one there when we got there. Well, the, the first guy was there. Uh, he was just everywhere. Uh, so, uh, pretty sure the 500 pounder hit him. Wow. And for whatever reason, I mean, the guys were so close lying next to each other, like their boots and stuff were touching. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, one guy just uh, vaporized and one of the guy just like was still there full body. It was crazy. Um, yeah. yeah. So that was a little crazy one. Um, just again, you know, I'm just around it. Like I'm not really involved in it. It's just like all this stuff's going on around me. You're like, oh man, this is nuts. So uh, yeah. one of them, you know, I think some other guys were telling about, uh, you know, um, Schleich was on here saying, hey, you know, doing 100 plus missions in a 90 day rotation. Uh, yeah. You know, I counted up 118 on one of mine, uh, sending us out during the day. Uh, just walking around the rocks, the glue on my boots failed. And so I'm walking around, just like my soles are flapping off. Uh, just yeah. nutty stuff that goes on there. Um, funny story. Uh, I think it was J Rob working with SF. They had a SIF team with our, with our task force. Mm-hmm. And so they sent us out with like all the teams out on one objective. And we each had our areas, except SIF was going to fly around a little bird. And provide like QRF support. I don't know. Unbeknownst to me, J. Rob and his team took a bag of grenades with them. So we go on our side of the river. Our partners go on the other side of the river, and we're kind of doing our thing. Thank God for moving map at the time because it really, really saved a lot of problems. Sure. But you know, we're hearing these explosions. Like yeah, it's just quiet on our side. And we're doing what we need to do. Like nobody's messing with us. Um, but it's just getting after it on the other side of the river. And I'm like trying to listen up and like, there's nothing going over strike. And so the JTAC for them calls me up. And he's like, Hey, you got to stop that. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, enough with the grenades. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's <laughs> like, who's dropping grenades out of the helicopter. I'm like, not me. He's like, well, you need to stop it. You can't authorize it. I'm like, I'm not authorizing it. So I'm like, let me see what I can do. And so I'm calling up, like, nobody's answering me, obviously. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, of course. I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to go up on Hilo Calm and, like, everything. And so, like, they just turned everything off. And what they were doing is, like, as they were squirting off at the other side of the river, running into the river and in the reeds, like, they are just flying over, dropping grenades on them. It was nuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so so throughout that whole time, all my uh, all my deployments with them, um, you know, eventually went from 90 days to, a, a, you know, 120 days. Yeah, like 120. Uh, yeah. But it lined us up with all the groups you know, kind of doing the same thing when we got that fourth uh, company. Right. And so it just so worked out that the, the one sixtieth support that we had, like it was the same crew. Okay. And so like first name bases, all that good stuff. Nice. So my last deployment with them, um, I get woken up and there's a red cross message. And uh, so my wife and I had been trying to have kids for like two and a half years and we went through yeah. in vitro and everything. Um, <laughs> showman trying to put up with my bullshit training uh while i'm trying to still like take advantage of the in the vitro and the timelines and everything but it, sure. it ended up working my wife got pregnant and so then i deployed you know it's not that long of deployments but robbie comes in and he was like hey you got a red cross message uh there's been complications with your wife and daughter and like you know unborn daughter like we knew it at the point it was it was a girl and so like that's really all they tell me like you're going home like now and this huge sandstorm was blowing in and so again Robbie Trust, hands down, probably one of the best ALOs. Not only just a good dude. I mean, 
uh, you know him. He, he's a yeah. good, good dude. But I mean, Alo wise, he's phenomenal. Yeah. So everything is grounded on this uh, sandstorm except for um, bird's eye. And so they're like, yeah, we're going to Blod. Like now he needs to be on the pad at Biop, like ready to go. And we'll pick him up. Nice. So uh, I'm just standing out there and I, I just know that's it. That's all I know is there's complications. Man, and, man. And, it's, and bad enough that I got Red Cross. Yeah. And so I get up, get up to Balad and uh, the Rangers have a phenomenal logistic pipeline. Yeah. Like I had no idea. So I check in with this guy and he's like, hey, go, like nothing's flying. Everything's grounded. Go to the terminal, check. So I go there and they're like, yeah, nothing's flying. The same storm. It's here. Like, like everything's grounded. And so I'm crushed, right? I'm terrified. Jeez, you know, there's no yeah. communication. I have no idea what's going on. Well, Dino is one of my 160 pilots. Like he's the one I used to get in trouble with. Uh, and we're not talking because <laughs> we didn't hang out. Like he was up at, you know, he was stationed somewhere else. Like we used to get in trouble because like I would tell him I only wanted uh, Willie Pete rockets for marking. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh, I can't mark for you. All I got is Willie Pete. I'm like, well, I guess you're going to have to use what you got. And so that's how we would mark. Uh, and then yeah. they kind of caught wise to that. And then and we were just doing all kinds of shenanigans and stuff. Sure. Uh, but it was close enough a relationship with all these deployments. Like, like we knew each other by face. And so he's at Balad. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm kind of telling him, like, well, like, this is what's going on. Like, and I'm stuck. And he's like, like, that's not true. We're leaving in 15 minutes. And so he's like, come on. And so we swing nice. through like the, that little s- section that the Rangers got was just an NCO. We're like, hey, he's getting on the bird with here. Here's the flight information deuces. And he's like, got you. And, and we just run to the bird. And he's like, hey, man, he's coming home with us. And they're like, ah, we don't care. So <laughs> into the C-17, into the sandstorm we go. And like throughout the flight, I get this, you know, whiteboard, you know, with the Kim stick, you know, cut out so I can read it. And it's like, hey, uh, uh, 1996, whatever Ford Ranger license plate this is going to show up at uh, to brag and pick you up and drive you back. And uh, the only thing they got wrong was license plate number and that, <laughs> that private that was picking me up that got sent up to get me was like, hey, I'm really sorry. You know, the license plate isn't the same. I'm like, bro, I don't care. Let's go. Yeah, who cares? Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah, so they got me back and I actually beat from Iraq. I beat my mother-in-law coming from Vegas to uh, to to, ben, uh, to Columbus. I beat her. Really? Uh, yeah. So wife ends up going on like four months of bed rest uh, with this kid because uh, she can't move around. So, I mean, she almost lost everything. It was terrible. Um, and... Uh, you know, so we start like just going in with all these complications with this because like we're just like terrible at being pregnant, apparently. Yeah. Uh, and I say we, um, you know, so she just had to suffer with so much. Sure, sure. And so we get it all fixed up. And so, you know, I'm continuing to train and we got another deployment coming up. And, uh, you know, I had always just wanted to stay in the 17th forever. Um, my wife has never asked me to quit, never asked me to leave, never asked me to slow down. I mean, the first two and a half years, the longest I was ever physically with her, with her was a five week stretch when I came home from Korea. Like yeah. other than that, it just been like shorter time periods. Uh, I did the math of what we were doing during that time. And, uh, I personally was gone 275 days a year plus. Jeez. Um, so, it, and you know, she was, she was just a trooper started seeing like healing up, like getting better. And I can see this light at the end of the tunnel. You guys were like flirting with maybe me going back over and trying out for RD. Are we going to go through tryout or are you going to allow the army to dictate who we send over? And like, so things are really starting to look up. And then I look to my left, sitting on the couch there in Georgia. And my wife is just full, like locked up. Um, you know, so I got to grab my, you know, my daughter out of her, uh, out of her hands. She, my daughter's like two months old at this point and uh, put her down. And my, like, my, my wife's just like, she's not there anymore. And so, uh, you know, I call 911 and uh, she's just completely unresponsive and limp. And like, I'm on the phone with them. I'm like, hey, you know, um, I, I need somebody here now. You know, this is kind of going on. They're like, hey, cool. You know, is she breathing? I'm like, yeah, you know, let me, uh, let, you know, I'm trying to check. You know, I had to get this out. And so uh, I can't get a pulse. Uh, you know, I can't see any breath. I'm completely unresponsive. Uh, I think she's dead. So I got to put the phone down and I got to get her off the couch because you can't do CPR on a couch. It's just insane. Uh, so I'm going to put you on speaker. And she's like, yeah, yeah, um, somebody's on its way. I'm like, great. I'm not talking to you anymore. I got to go do this. And so as I lean down to pull my wife off the couch to get on the floor so I can start CPR because I, th- I thought she was dead. Yeah. Uh, like her eyes open, like creepy horror movie style. Uh, now she wasn't home, but her eyes did open. I'm like, okay, okay. She's not dead. We're good. Um, like we could, probably, we could probably recover for this if she's going to open her eyes. That or like end of the world. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Zombie stuff going on. But um, what it was was <laughs> uh, so no, she's she has epilepsy now. Oh. And so what I think it was is just like all the stress she had dealt with. Um, she just dealt with it, right? So never asked me to quit. Never asked me to slow down. I think honestly as arrogant and dumb as I was back then, if she would have told me to knock it off, uh, we probably would have divorced. Uh, Cause I wouldn't have given it up for the world. And then this yeah. happens. Right. Um, so all this stuff goes down, um, had 
wonderful family support from the ranger side, which I think they got in contact with uh, the command there at uh, the 17th and kind of let them in on some stuff because I was trying to go on my last deployment, like through all this I was. And so uh, I got stopped on that. And so finally I went in, I'm like, Hey, Schleich, I've got to go. Like, I don't care what it is. I got to go. And he's like, what do you want? I was like, like my enlistment's up. Like I did my four years here. Like I'm just done. So either find something for me or I'm going to bounce. He's like, what do you want to stay active? Do you want to go guards? Like, and I wasn't really in the, in the mindset, like at that point to have a discussion. And so instead of like separating and doing all that, he got me a, um, he got me a, an assignment like immediately to go down to the schoolhouse. So nice. But uh, I kind of want to pull back uh, then and go into like the people that were there. Cause that's pretty funny. Um, you know, and I, and I said that before, I'm just kind of surrounded by like the most amazing people. So, you know, Maddie got me into ranger school um, at one point. I'm like walking down the hallway and Brandenburg comes up. He didn't remember this cause I've talked to him. I think at Gavlick's funeral, um, but uh, he stops me. He's like, Hey, are you in your degree program? I'm like, no, nah, man. Like, well, no sergeant, obviously, uh, but uh, <laughs> no, you know, I'm too busy for that. And he's like, I'm busier than you are. And I'm in my master's. What's your excuse? I'm like, mm. he's like, if you don't start your degree, I will kill you. <laughs> I was like, well, all right. So a little bit later that day, uh, must've been a Wednesday or Thursday. I went in and asked him, he told me about AMU and all this weekend goes on. I get enrolled that weekend. Uh, I got a degree program Monday morning is combatives and he just beats the tar out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, at one point he knocked like my head, my head geared down. I can't see anything. And he's just like, why aren't you blocking? And I'm just like trying to guess. Cause I can't see anything. And he just, he just, punches. He just, just, just wails on me. Uh, and when he's done, he looks at me, he's like, you start your degree program. I'm like, you could have asked like 10 minutes ago when this started. Right. Yes. So that, you know, I got a degree, you know, I, I started my degree program, which really pays off di- dividends. Um, I mean, Schleich is there one day. So, uh, one of the guys coming out of the third ID, uh, the 15th day sauce, I got him a ranger school slot and he ended up quitting mm. and uh, man, I was mad. So yeah. mad because he kind of ruined it for everybody uh, and yeah. embarrassed us. And so he ends up going to try out again for the 17th, whether it's for, you know, an STS or, or whatever. I was 100% ready to scuttle this kid's career because I was just so furious, right? Completely forgetting all the dumb stuff I'd pulled in my life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'm TDY with, with Matt Schleich uh, in Vegas, standing on top of the parking garage at the Alliance, waiting for somebody to connect to something digital. And I'm just running my suck. Uh, you know, can't believe it, blah, 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 blah. And he just turns to me, super nonchalant. He's like, haven't you ever made a mistake? And it changed my life. Just, just you know, one of my senior NCOs just giving me the best, you know, common know knowledge yeah. uh, that I needed to hear. And it literally changed my mind. And that guy got selected. I mean, I think he got, and if he listens to this, I'll know, you know who it is, but he like, got hit in the face on the obstacle course in the trials and he was bleeding everywhere. Um, he needed stitches. Then they, if they were going to like dope him up for these stitches, they were going to have to drop him from the selection. So they, he's like, nah, and they put in stitches and he got selected. Uh, nice. and, and I've sent in which, uh, you know, and I, I have found him and apologized and told him exactly what I, what I'd been doing and how mad I was. And, you know, apologize, it's kind of clean, clean, but he's done great things in the, in the world. So, you know, yeah. just other great people, um, you know, just everybody reaching out, you know, when I had my problems, we had some, um, some 17th ASOS members had some problems as well. So I think our command was well suited maybe to, to, to see those uh, yeah. and to help out. And so, I mean, when I needed it, just like had me orders down to the schoolhouse, like nice. within a week, I mean, I had, I had an answer. So I was able to go and tell, you know, my wife was like, Hey, like, we're going to get out of this hole we're in. Like, we're going to heal, and we're going to go do this. Awesome. So pushes me down to Florida. I'm a schoolhouse instructor, which is pretty good. Um, I mean, Lundquist was my chief. Nice. Chris Wright was my commander. I mean, like, what am I going to complain about? Yeah. Uh, and that's when I found mental wellness because I was not well. Yeah. Um, there was a time when my wife and I got into an argument, and – my go-to was violence. Now, I, you know, I've never, I've never touched my wife. I've never laid my hands on her, but in my mind, that was the next step. And that's when it really shocked me. I was like, oh my God, I about put her through a window. Mm. Like, that's what I was going to go do. Like, what is wrong with me? And yeah, there was some significant problems with me. Uh, just yeah. at the 17th, I had a healthy outlet for all of my stress. You know, I was very good at stress. And then when there's no stress, I wasn't good at it. So yeah. started getting help. You know, I'd mentioned we went two and a half years not being able to get pregnant and we had to have mm. like, you know, technology get us pregnant well a year after like getting stationed down there and uh and getting the help i needed and my wife healing and everything like we naturally were able to get pregnant with before like it wasn't going to happen so you know there's nice. a lot to be said for mental wellness uh and that oh, all yeah. happened down there so um you know, pretty good stuff uh 
man, I just completely skipped over all the training stuff at the 17th, but, uh, we yeah, can we go can. back. It's okay. Oh, I mean, whatever, right. whatever well, a do. lot of it, of all of it, is with you. So, <laughs> so oh, okay. Uh, that'd be fun to say. <laughs> Maybe so, we should skip um, it then. No. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, these are these are training, training, training. Oh, okay, so, okay. Uh, were you at White Sands with us uh, when we got engaged by Germans? Wait, with the um, tornadoes. I think I came a day after that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That was so, bananas. Uh, yeah. Yes, that was bananas. Absolutely. So, like that. Uh, luckily, nobody got hit because we'd have to reevaluate that that fact where no American forces have been engaged by enemy aircraft since 1956 <laughs> or whatever. Because uh, there's a point in the range where you're driving south next to the range and you lose radio coverage. So you mm. stop, check in, continue to drive south, come back up through the gate, drive north till you get to the radio and say, "Hey, we're back in radio control." Well, once we had done that, range control approved the German JTAX a range extension. So as we get on the range, we're traveling south to north in a convoy of three black Suburbans, right? Yeah. And we look to our left, so to the west, and low level, low level, we see these aircraft streaking at us. We're like, yeah, like these guys, you know, having a little bit of fun. And then they pop, bear down on us, and open up a 20 millimeter. Jeez. And so Scott McPhee is driving my truck. I'm behind him. All the windows are down because it's balls hot. Dirt from the impacts because the, the rounds went over the top of us. I, I mean, I don't know what's worse, like that they engaged moving vehicles on that range. When yeah, that's what I, that's all what I always say. Like, what what were they thinking? Like, there's no moving the vehicles f- out there. Fact that they missed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the so the the rounds impacted over the top of our heads into the berm next to the road. The dirt landed on us. I mean, we were covered in dirt. And so Scott, I've never been in a vehicle driven in reverse so fast before because we're just screaming backwards, right? So uh, that was pretty interesting. I thought you were, I thought maybe you were there for that, but. No, I wasn't actually uh, there for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What about the time frame in the 17th where your mom jokes? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) They're pretty much constantly. uh, Yeah, there was a, there was a time though. And I mean, we were all training together and it started in garrison because you would, you would go in and you would initiate like whatever conversation. It didn't matter what it was, whether it was serious or not serious. And then you just have to stop and just wait for the mom jokes to get out of, them, to get out of our system. And at that time, uh, we were going to head out to Gila Bend. Yeah. And Drum called us and said, hey, we got a couple guys going to QC. You mind if they tag along? And we got this really rock star A1C that we want to send. And we're like, yeah, straight, cool. So we get out there and this is during that time where, <laughs> and I remember like you were, you were on point with that. Like <laughs> if you were in the room, like, Hey, what's going on today? And then you'd wait and you'd wait and you're like, okay, that's probably three. I bet I can continue the conversation. <laughs> and so, uh, one of the guys from drum was just super sensitive about this. And so he wasn't doing well <laughs> with the jokes. <laughs> and, uh, so he, he was a little emotional. Um, yeah, but then yeah. me, him, Brandenburg, and then their A1C, we go all out to uh, Yodaville okay. to control, and this kid's going to get his top off for QC. And Brandenburg's got that CD with the gun with the gunfire on it, and like he's just got it cranked. And we're sitting in this Overwatch. It's a night cast mission, and my job is to be the attack guy. And Brandenburg was going to be the C and run, you know, the scenario as an enemy. Yeah. And so he cranks this up, and you know, this kid is sitting in there, and the gunfire out of the speakers is just going. And the aircraft are starting to check on and Brandenburg's like yelling as the ground force commander what he wants. And like, I'm working with him and like, I look down and like just sobbing, just crocodile tears, just like, it's just too much. <laughs> really? Right. And so Brandenburg uh, is yelling at him, um, you know, just normal stuff. Sure. Sure. And I can kind of tell like, Hey, it's getting, it's, you know, he's getting a little more animated about like angry that nothing's coming over the mic. And I'm like, Hey, certain Brandenburg, like, mm, mm. like, uh, <laughs> like we got a situation. And uh, so then he starts in on me. Um, like, you know, it's because it's my job, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah, hey, look, just just look. And he looks down. He's like, you know, what, what, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what about him? And I look back at this A1C and I'm like, hey, man, you ready to take the mic? And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> this A1C just jumps on the mic and just kills it. Like, and you know, we run like you know, 200 meters across this prairie dog town because Brandenburg is like driving all through the city. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it, it was awesome. But uh, yeah. yeah, that was a little nuts. Uh, gosh dang, during that whole period. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's also the trip um, that they gave us a one of the. I think the the guard unit gave us a twenty millimeter shell on a plaque that was all hollowed out. <laughs> it was just yeah. a shell. And they wouldn't let us go back through security. That's right. We couldn't go through the airport yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, That's yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, you got a little angry on that one. I was like, oh, oh my God. yeah. I was not yeah. happy. I'm like, this yeah, is not at all. It's, it's an inert round. It's not even there's nothing <laughs> yeah, in it. There's no gunpowder, nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, uh, that was pretty funny. Uh, I think yeah. one time I almost bombed our four wheelers down to Avon Park with Tommy. Uh, you know, we were peeking <laughs> around danger close because Avon Park, they let you do it whatever you want. They don't sure. Even it's the Wild we West were, out there. We were giggling. Uh, and it was BDU 50s, um, so we were okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we were giggling how close we were and like how cool this was going to be. And then he stops. He's like, where did we park? I'm like, oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I missed the four wheelers, <laughs> so we're good. Um, yeah, the, the level of training there is just phenomenal. Um, oh, yeah. Were you there when Cordello or Ferguson came in? Yeah, did, for oh, no, I wasn't. I don't think so. So I didn't understand like what that level of training gives you, and so so I was the I was the chief tech guy there coming out of there because they got to do something with me because I you know I was leaving. Sure. And so I was the chief tech guy when Cordello and both Ferguson came in, and. At that point, I've been doing it for almost four years, and it was just seamless, right? And everybody is. Like, it's just a, such a phenomenal unit, and you just feed off of each other. Yeah. And so the first one that came in, uh, Cordell, Cordell, Cordello, <laughs> he did such a good job on selection that he wasn't a JTAC, and uh, I think she, like, forgot that. And so we bring in a non-JTAC. <laughs> so <laughs> me and Tommy have him out at the, at Nellis. And again, Tommy's running the scenario. I'm in the back seat working on, you know, trying to get him ready for his initial JTAC evaluation. Right. And so we've got the MQ9s and we got rally points playing op for it's freaking hilarious. Uh, just one MQ9 in the air. And so we get out and Cordella just locks up. And so the pilots are talking. Tommy's doing this. He's like, he's looking at me. I'm like, he's locked up. You know, it takes a while for somebody to process that. So yeah. Tommy, and I'll never forget this, you know, he's a big dude. He yeah. runs around the front of the car. And uh, Kyle McSherry is shooting. He's working for Rally Point. He's shooting Roman candles at us. And I just see Roman candles bouncing off Tommy's <laughs> back. And uh, he gets up and he looks at Cordero, who's just, you know, locked up. Grabs him by the back of the plate. And he's like, get on the mic. Let's go. And he runs off. <laughs> so, you know, it was one of those things. And, you know, so we're talking about it. You know, we're not mad. And I'm like, hey, Chris, what's going on? Like, let's let's talk about this. And he was like, all I could think of is which way is south, right? And so... Uh, you know, I know that Brandenburg talked about our training program there and like how we'd get yeah. lauded for just being so crazy. And so that truly was, you know, there's no hard feelings for making mistakes. Um, no, for and that sure. was just, you know, something like, Hey, let's talk about this. Like what happened? And so, you know, we worked through it. And so then we were able to gauge him up and like this dude went on to do incredible things. Right. So, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, it doesn't really matter where you start from. It's like just where, sure. where that, where that unit can get you, you know, and Ferguson was the same way we get out him training and we were doing some low level high threat with a tens right out there in Vegas for his initial one. And we get done. I'm like, hey, you know, you saw it done. Like, tomorrow we're going to walk you through it, yada, yada, yada. He's like, I can't do it. I'm like, is everything okay? You know, like, what's going on? He's like, no, I can't do what you guys just did. <laughs> I was like, gosh, dang. It's like, and so he was great to have his feedback. I was like, okay, so we got to tailor these programs. He was coming out of the schoolhouse and hadn't controlled in years. And now, like, now we're right, throwing right. him out there during like a soft phase in fighter weapons school doing the level <laughs> high threat stuff. And it was just, uh, that unit is so great to throw everything at you, mm -hmm. like, just in training. So, I mean, when you get overseas, it's just, Oh yeah, this is super easy. Like, it's right, exactly. It's yeah. the it's the epitome of training like you fight, and then just being second nature, kind of muscle memory yeah. type stuff when you get in combat. You know, it's like yeah, oh yeah, I've done this a thousand times. No, no yeah, big deal. Then, you know, I I wish you know I wish I could have had a, a you know, some some sort of metric of like how long is it until these guys are like they forget you know what it's like to be new, which is sure. really convenient because now I go down to Florida, right, and uh, you know. <laughs> I PCS with a line for tech. So they put me in charge immediately and I got all these great NCOs and you never know anybody's backstory. That's what I get out of your podcast is these people's, you know, their, their origin story. And so like, you know, Peyton Knebel you had on here and I listened to him yeah. um, and I had no idea he felt that way about himself. Cause as I'm his supervisor down there, like he's just a rock star. I yeah. mean, crazy good. And he was telling me these things and you know, I didn't know that he had, you know, a, a fratricide incident in training that, right, that right. he thought was just killed his career. And he's like, I should do this. I'm like, man, you're one of the best NCOs I've ever met. Yeah. Like yeah, everybody makes mistakes. And like, he, he's telling that story. He's like, I don't remember saying it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, then he went on to do great things, but I had him and Bo French, um, okay. who has been a great NCO. Um, you know, he came up under the tutelage like Corbett and Stockman. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so both of those guys, <laughs> I, I can honestly say I was not that good of an NCO. Like I just, it's always about the mission and I've always worked by myself. Um, and now I've got like guys that are looking like to me to be their bosses or NCIC of like an entire flight down there. And like, right. I got Knipple and French who are just charismatic, wonderful leaders. Uh, and Bo's a monster. So, I mean, he just, he just commands <laughs> leadership when he walks in a room like, Oh shit, we better follow him. He might eat us. Um, you know, and then, and then he backs it up, which is by the way he runs people. It's great. So I really had to learn some hard lessons about micromanaging from them. 
which yeah. was great. Um, but that's uh, the thing about the 17th. I mean, as much as the training is top notch there, you don't get a whole lot of opportunities to, to lead, you know, unless you're like an NCOC of a flight or your op soup, you, you really not leading anybody. You're just on a, you know, you're assigned to a Ranger battalion or company or squad or whatever platoon, or you're an RD team. And then, you don't lead anybody. So it's kind of hard to go from that to where you had to go as a tech sergeant leading troops. You know, it's kind of difficult. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I botched stuff up right and left and uh, I know I did because uh, Bo was coming in and he was asking for more responsibility, both him and Peyton Knipple made tech. And so I was a tech and they, they were, they were looking to put on tech. Yeah. Hey, I want more. I want more. I want more. Well, I hadn't figured it out. Mm-hmm. So one day um, I know Bo is on leave. Peyton's there. And like, it was just a light bulb bing. Like, why, why am I doing anything <laughs> other than the administrative? Right. Right. Like I got, I got people who are better at my job than me that can take <laughs> right. all these great things and just go kill it. Like, what yeah. am I doing? Well, Peyton's there. So I tell him like, Hey man, I'm taking you off all this side stuff. Cause you are going to be in charge of an entire flight of students all the way through. Right. And then we overlap students. So like Bo's going to do the other classes. They overlap and you guys are just going to, you're going to lead. And like, I'll do all the BS behind the work. Yeah. Like I'm good at that. Like I can, I can <laughs> right. manage like you wouldn't believe. Uh, so he was like, great, great. And so I went to Chief Longquist. I'm like, hey, here's what I want to do. Like, I can't believe that I've been doing this. Like, I want to, like, you got to find somebody else for all these duties. Like, uh, I can, I can maintain these. I'll spread them out. But like, I'm going to fire from him. He's like, yeah, cool. And so we do that. And then I go on leave and Bo comes in for the rest of the week. And all he's told, because I think Peyton has gone, all he's told is he's been fired from everything. Oh, no. <laughs> and so uh, he doesn't get the why. He, he So in his mind, and I get this, and I was thinking about it all weekend. And he has been asking me for more and more responsibility because he wants, he wants it. Like he's going to yeah. be a tech or he was, I can't remember. Uh, and then he comes into work and he got fired from everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I don't remember from the grapevine. I heard that he was, you know, he's pretty upset with me and Bo's a monster. Right. (laughs) And so I'm trying to call him all weekend. He will not take my call. He lives like half a mile down the road from me in Florida. And (laughs) I'm just not going to drive down there. Like, uh, kind of like, Hey, I I made a mistake how I handled the communication and be like, if you're going to be a baby, (laughs) I'm just going to let you stew on it. Sure. Sure. So Monday I do two things. First I go get, uh, Colbert who, uh, big, big Asian man. (laughs) And he's our combative, primary combative instructor. I'm like, Hey, come to my office. I got to talk to Bo. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm hoping to get the words out before he kills me. Uh, and so I have Bo in and he just won't talk to me. He's so mad at me, um, but he won't disobey. Like I'm, I, I, I had to order him like, Bo, get in, sit. Yeah. And he's like, well, you got, you got Colbert in here. So <laughs> it's protection. I'm like, yes. Uh, listen. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I tell him and, you know, just, you know, he just, Oh my God. Oh my God. And, you know, Colbert leaves. I'm like, look, dude, you know, I get it. Uh, I'm not even mad that you wouldn't take my call. Like, and you probably deserved a sleepless weekend for not, you know, not picking up the phone, but sure, sure. You know, let's do this. And so he just crushed it, you know? So, um, him and Peyton started doing that. Peyton went to selection. Um, you know, Bo, uh, went back up to Kansas. I got to work with him again. Uh, just a lot of good stuff. You know, these just yeah. great people. So on that, uh, you know, I went over, to, I went to Lundquist. I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about applying because I randomly have a degree that I don't need <laughs> because <laughs> a great NCO in my past uh, was going to F and kill me if I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, you know, so what do you think about me applying to be a, you know, an ALO? And he's like, I think that's a great idea. And Christopher Wright was completely supportive. So I work on this package um, to go ALO Pure uh, Officer Board uh, when they were mm-hmm. just selecting prior service tech P's to go to OTS uh, through the Air Force system. Um, and, uh, you know, phenomenal letters of recommendation. Christopher Wright has sat on boards before. I had no idea his backstory, but he's seen a lot of the air force, which mm. that's the program OTS works through. It's not go be an ALO. It's go be an officer for the air force. Yeah. And so he kind of, he knew all like, and he helped me with my package. It was great. Um, they canceled that board. I let it ride. I get a system automated email that says, Hey, you don't. No, I got a phone call saying um, that I hadn't served half my enlistment, so I couldn't go to the board, hmm. uh, the regular OTS board. I'm like, well, let it ride. Yeah. Uh, Christopher leaves. We get a new commander in, and I get the system made automated email that says, hey, your package went to the board. I'm like, Ooh, I'm not going to say anything because it shouldn't have. <laughs> right. uh, I get picked up. Um, it was all well and good. I go to OTS. Uh, they're going to make me an ALO, even though it wasn't guaranteed. It's like, well, what else are you going to do? <laughs> I, mean, I don't really have <laughs> yeah. skills outside of that, but right. uh, do really well at OTS. It's basic training without all the stress. Um, uh, just incredibly easy school. I get connected with some really neat individuals, prior service guys. Uh, I end up being the number one grad out of there. Nice. Um, uh, and it's all grade point average wise. Uh, 
And then I also have more training LORs than anybody else in the history of the school. Uh, so <laughs> um, coming from AATC, I kind of knew what their rules were and like what you could and couldn't get in trouble with. Yeah, yeah. And my grade point average was better than anybody else's in my class. So like, uh, it's not that I was untouchable, but like, what are you really going to do to me? All right. So I think at one point um, I get brought in and I'm getting another whatever training LOR for whatever shenanigans I had done. And I was like, yeah, you know, let, let's get this over. It's like, I got stuff to do. Like, awesome. And he was like, well, you don't see too, you know, too concerned. I was like, oh, well, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, ask me how many I had, because you usually get recycled like at, at five or six, four to six, you'll, they'll recycle you. I had 13 uh, <laughs> at that point. And so uh, I was like, well, so I'm, you know, you put me in a leadership position. Um, I figure you'll fire me first. And then you can like got to observe me to see if I can handle being a regular student. And if I can't, then you'll recycle me. So are, are you firing me? And he's like, no. I was like, well, that's not why I'm not concerned. And he just started laughing. He's like, get out of here. <laughs> Wait, no, get back here. Wait, so what, is, get out so here. What, what would be something, what's an example of you getting an LOR? Like, what would you get these LORs? Uh, so like uh, one of them, they give us this, this, this tactical problem. And it's just out in this big open field. And so you're on this team. And so like you have to run your team through it. And they have these rules. And so part of the whole exercise is as you go, you get penalties, which then you discover the rules and you complete the mission once you discover the rules. Yeah, okay. And so for whatever reason, the instructor that we had, like as soon as you figured out the rules, he would change the rules because he thought it was funny. And so like I didn't, I didn't quite understand that. I was still pretty arrogant. Like who are you to tell me like to go run a combat mission and then grade me on it? Like you're exactly. ridiculous. He's like, well, one of the guys on my team um, who ended up, ended, up, ended up being a really good friend of mine, but at that point wasn't like just wouldn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing everything I can. Like the rest of my team is like, okay, like just stop, Let, let's collect. And this guy just, he just wouldn't. And so uh, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing him off the ground a little bit, like uh, <laughs> getting through to him. I felt uh, when I stopped the entire field, which is a massive, massive field is just like dead quiet. And my buddy from like the team over, he just starts laughing <laughs> really, really loud. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I failed that event and I got an LOR for bouncing a guy off the ground. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> You know, at one point, the uh, the upper class runs the lower class, and they have this really cool um, blue line crossing deal. And it's like, it's completely darkness, and, you know, they have everybody turn around, and then you light up this uh, LED blue strips on the ground. And so then you about face, and, like, it's just blue, and we're going to go do the Airman's Creed or whatever. And then you step across, like, your commitment to the Air Force. It's, it's really touching. I mean, it's really, really cool how they do this. Yeah. Uh, even even when I was doing it, I had 12 years in, and, like, it's still, it's still like, it's like, man, this is really cool. Yeah. Uh, just the way the lighting is and everything and the way they do it. And um, half the LEDs didn't light up. And I remember thinking during this, like, ooh, that's unprofessional. Man, that sucks. Yeah. And so, like, that next week, uh, I get called in. And they're like, hey, why? Who messed this up? Like, why did this get messed up? I'm like, how would I know? And they're like, mm. I was like, oh, great. Somebody in my squadron was in charge. And I didn't know about it. So um, at, the, uh, at our Friday kind of get together, you know, we do our thing. And we sit down. I'm like, okay, who f***ed up the blue line ceremony? And yeah. like this girl just like got up and ran crying out of the room. I'm like, oh, I guess we know who did it. <laughs> um, you know, so they had a talk with me. Like the, the girls on my flight had a talk with me. I'm like, look, I don't, I don't care who you are. Like, because yeah. they told me I can't talk to women like that in the military. I was like, that's awesome um, because you're not in the military. And I have been. And this is direct feedback. Like, yeah, fix it. Right. Um, <laughs> I got, yeah, I got an LOR for that. Um <laughs> Jeez. I didn't, uh, there's a whole bunch of made up <laughs> rules like that you have to follow when it's part of the program. And like, I just can't do that. Yeah. Like, I couldn't like opening there's a There's no reason behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Like and it did make sense because it wasn't real air force. Uh, the upper class would like try to do this stuff and I'd be like, man, I don't know the quotes of the day and I'm never going to learn them. So we're just going to stand here until the event's over and I'd get LORs and stuff. It was just, you know, little <laughs> things like that. So, it's okay. Funny, so. <laughs> so I go and I get my commission. Uh, I go up to Kansas, which is good. Uh, I immediately get put in web tech with Stockman. Um, all the other ALOs at division are like, sweet, high five. Uh, we're going golfing, which was kind of funny. Um, but then I basically ran all everything in division. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it ends up being like me, the sergeant major, division fire sergeant major, the division, you know, fire CW5. Uh, there was a <laughs> CW4 stockman. Their kids would like all go back to my hometown from Kansas, like three hours down the road. We'd have these huge hunting trip. Uh, you know, it's it was a really good environment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the rock star NCOs in Kansas was just phenomenal. I think I got a list here. Oh, yeah. Stockman, Cry, Ren, Pachesa. Like, those guys were all there. Like, and, and more oh, yeah. on this, and Brandon Peterson. Like, they were all there and, like, really, really struggling with some leadership. And so morale was pretty bad. 
Um, and then we, you know, we get some new commanders in, we're trying to fix this thing. And then at one point, one of my buddies comes in and he was like, Hey, why don't you come over to the ASOC? So I did that and, and ISIS was kicking off. So first ID was going to be the first division and goes in. So I go over on Advon, um, two weeks early, uh, to set up the ASOC in Iraq. And that was very unique, uh, cause, uh, you know, that pulled the curtain back and they were doing those strike cells at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were, there were so many JTACs running out of biop. Uh, the strike cell, the guy in charge just pulled in all, you know, every JTAC that was working in some capacity. They all went to his talk. And so myself and one NCO out of Kansas were working as a team because we all, you know, everybody teams up on that mic there. And we worked every other day. And every other shift that we had, we would be the primary JTAC. So I wasn't okay. on the mic other than every 96 hours. Okay. And there was no log. There was no targeting. It was just like 70, 96 hours later, I'm the primary JTAC and like, there's nothing. Like we got this really crude Google maps thing with like icons anywhere, but there's no, there's no numbering capacity. Yeah. There's no structure. There's no nothing. And so I was like, Hey, logs, like get this thing organized. And people are like, Oh, we knew division was going to screw this up when they came into country. I'm like, <laughs> awesome guys. Um, <laughs> you know, and it, it was great. You know, that's, I mean, killing guys, killing ISIS in the talk in mass while I'm eating biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Right? Like that, that was warfare. Um, at that point, uh, sure. it was nuts. We're just, we're driving predators around, uh, soda straw, looking for flags, looking for, you know, construction equipment and just, you see it, you just kill it all. Uh, they had, they had dominated their areas of influence so much. Um, but it, you know, so uh, do you know the Baji oil refinery? Uh, no, no. Okay, really. so it sits just to the north of Baghdad and then on the west side of like the Maven and Osara coming out of Baghdad. So there's Baji oil refinery and it's like surrounded. So the CTS, the Iraqi CTS, whether they are just a load of badasses or whether they just like couldn't surrender because they would just all get killed, for whatever yeah. reason, they still owned the refinery. Okay. In a sea of ISIS. And so we're airdropping stuff in because nobody can get to them. And our, you know, our job as supporters, we're trying to get the Iraqi army to go link up with them and open them up. And one day we get the reports because we got, you know, we got people embedded all over like, hey, it's overrun. And uh, cloud deck is in. So we don't have eyes on anything. We're just like, hey, this, 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 we can't let it go, but it's gotten overrun. And uh, so I get, I have uh, French F-16s overhead. No, no, I don't. It, it was American, definitely American, because that's the only way we could drop. So what we have to do is that we're trying to get some sort of coordinates, which are going to be nasty anyways. But they say sure. that a guard tower is gone and like the walls have been breached. And so we get confirmation. They want us to take out the guard tower. And so like super confirmation both ways. We got to go into our imagery and then like correlate which guard tower it is. And so we drop on mensurated coordinates uh, off the, from the targeting cell and uh, put two 500 pounders on the guard tower and... At that time, we got told I missed, right? Yeah. I don't have any eyes on the ground. Like, so I turned to the commander. I'm like, hey, we're done. Like, uh, we're not going to be successful at this point. Um, sure. But we also stopped getting told that they were under contact. So no longer are they overrun. We missed the guard tower. Um, and then that, that's, just, that's it. That's rest. Like, it's over. And so a couple of days later, we get eyes on and like, yeah, the guard tower super gone. <laughs> so they're rebuilding it. Uh, I don't, to this day, I don't know what happened, but that real, I mean, those are lessons that uh, luckily nothing bad happened, but like, Hey, if that would have been those French that they kept sending us, like I like trying to read, like the language barriers can get really, really difficult. And that's where like oh, your type sure. control, you know, mitigating risk, you know, type ones only like, Oh my goodness. I, I wouldn't have been able to do anything for those guys. Yeah. Um, kick back to uh, Buring and we set up the ASOC in the rear D talk. <laughs> so got an operational you know, cell sitting next to the rear D talk. Um, the AOC had been running ASOC duties in Iraq. So I got to rewrite all the spins and they were like, yeah, whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so I just went straight back out of the doctor and rewrote all the spins for it. Uh, there was no more ticks, no more prize, none of that. Like you just put up a 1972 and we'll prioritize it and send you stuff. Nice. Um, so we got all that done. Um, but being in a rear D talk is probably not the place for an ASOC. Yeah. Uh, we were having a shutdown operations because they were like, uh, had a birthday party going on back at Riley. <laughs> so they wanted to bring up VTC. I'm like, what is going on here? Oh uh, the army band playing in there. And so we can't do operations, uh, just, just nutty stuff. So, uh, so after that, um, whew, man, oh yeah. I tried to quit tobacco while I was out there. Oh, yeah. It did not work. No, everybody hated me. So uh, I didn't quit. <laughs> um, uh, and then, uh, my wife and I, uh, she was going to get, uh, something done and we we're going to wait till I got home. Uh, you know, and go in and have it done. And she like calls me. She's like, Hey, uh, we're not waiting. I'm like, I'm doing it. 
So I let the commander know. He's like, man, I'm sending a bunch of people back. You're good. Like, I'm just going to send you back. So I came home just a little bit early from that. And I had uh, early enough, because I was in my master's at that point, that I had four master's classes that had overlapped. So I land and I've got uh, four master's classes, a wife on bed rest, and two toddlers. <laughs> so <Nice. laughs> uh, that was good. Um, <laughs> I kind of fell in love with instructor, went back out to Nellis, uh, put on captain. I ran JTAC QC. I got to write a lot of the uh, advanced ALO course, taught in JFC some. That was amazing. That's awesome. Um, it was kind of funny there. Uh, boy, I, I, I kind of caught a bad rap of failing guys in the sim as an instructor out there. And that those sims are not hard. Right. And, uh I know like the NCIC never seemed to fail anybody. And I seem like, I don't know if I just got the bad draw and like all the students I got, like just couldn't pass it. But, you know, nobody really wanted to say anything because I was a flight commander, but I also was trying to get feedback. I'm like, guys, am I, am I off base here? Cause I got the grade sheets. Like, it's not just my opinion. Like I literally, we record everything. And so, you know, I'm trying to teach these guys like, Hey, how long after they leave this school, are they going to be controlling cast because they can't do the basics. Like we have standards here. It's a two or not like easy yeah. easy and so i had to send a lot of guys home for that um and i just never could i could never like get a grasp on like hey what's right wrong what's what's indifferent because uh, it's just one of those deals with standards and always kind of stuck with me like hey what are we doing here what are we doing for TACP here yeah um and that really you know started looking at the uh we started looking at the sims and i had some phenomenal tech guys out there just i mean geniuses uh i don't know if you ever bumped into a guy named uh uh jj uh jeremiah johnson uh, no, but just so. i mean just a genius he was he, he's, he's really got heavily into asoc and doing a lot of the new future stuff too but i mean he could dig into these deals and i mean he he humbled me <laughs> like so we're going out there doing this and he'd put me through these sims and like i get done i'm like man i just i just felt that like everything i've done like all the casts that, that i've controlled like everything i've learned and you just embarrassed me <laughs> in a sim and it was awesome right so we yeah. really started looking at hey what's right like, why are we having why are we asking these things and that that taught me the why like why are we doing it like let's start yeah. there so it was pretty good uh, i go on a joint staff deployment at that point uh, as a captain uh boy what a terrible terrible idea to be on joint staff <laughs> as a captain uh, i made a lot of coffee um oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah so uh, really it's not joint staff it was you know it's army staff and then they allow sure. some joint people to be on it and that's really the way it works so whatever role you're supposed to be if you're not like a key player like you just get shucked wherever so i'm running a strike cell for a three-star general like it's nuts yeah. um shouldn't be doing it uh we're running out of gb38s in the country and like they're <laughs> you know the, the f-22s are giving me a call on my strike freak which i don't have up and going it's just literally my telephone because it's all piped in really, really crazy right, right. um and so the guys that run that system are like giving me a call. It's ringing. I'm like, hey, yeah, what's going on? They're like, hey, uh, we're going to patch you in. Got the F F-22s F calling you. I'm like, why? Well, it's because <laughs> yeah, they want to drop their bombs, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, so they'll come in. They're like, and then, you know, people hear it. And it's the talk. And they're like, yeah, we got all these targets. I'm like, the, the land component and the SOCOM component commander, like, they don't want these things struck or they would strike. I'm like, why am I doing it? So right. I'd spend all day just denying targets. Go home, young Marine JTAC sitting at the desk after me. I'd go, you know, hand high five him, hand over, and he'd be like, I killed all these things. I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, just nutty stuff that goes on there. Um, definitely uh, utilize my copy making skills uh, yeah. as leverage. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. at one point, I finally got over to the, I was the battle major, um, you know, just running reports, right? Just taking, taking notes, create reports. And, on um, February 7th, the uh, the Syrians attacked us and the okay. Russians attacked us, right? And so we got some teams embedded with the Kurds that are trying to get, you know, on the north side of the river, they're on the south side of the river. They, they made a pocket for themselves. And so we start watching these guns point at our troops, right? I know where I'm at. I'm in the Joint Staff Talk, right? Like, I'm 380 kilometers away. I'm good. I'm not real scared, but I'm ready. And they open up and uh, we mop the floor with them. Zero, zero Kurd or, or um, you know, U.S. casualties. Right? We, they did. Um, we've got... You know uh, what is it, the November fire hellfire November model hellfire the thermal barrack well yeah, yeah. it'll kill a tank like it's not designed to do it but it'll do it <laughs> so I saw it happen three times um, you know the general comes in and uh, like it's it's at night shift I'm working night shift because the real talk has moved up to Iraq so I'm just waiting to go home and so mm -hmm. the, the the Air Force two star comes in and like it's night shift personalities uh, around me <laughs> if that means a lot yeah. and so he comes up and he comes up to my desk and he's like hey Captain Robinson I'm like not now sir right 
easy enough because I'm the only one in the talk doing all of the battle tracking, right? Because it's right. going to be his report, right? And great, like I'm not improper because like I'm the only one doing anything like sure. about what he needs. And he immediately sees that. Well, everybody else kind of freaks out. They're like, oh, you can't talk to the general. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, like yes, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. And he knows exactly what I'm doing now. And he will wait. Like, that's what right. we do. Like that, that's. Like, he'd rather you do that than right. talk to and, him. Yeah. And as soon as I said, hey, not now, sir. Like he just looked to see what I was doing. He's like, mm, yeah, all right, backs off. So he gets to talking to me a little bit uh, after that. So he's like, hey, you know, so what are you doing? A lot of that and kind of give him, you know, quick, you know, bored out of my mind you know he's like I'm like I, I actually do your reports for you sir he's like oh yeah how's that going i'm like well it would be better if i didn't have to do six other versions of it from all your cronies uh and he was like oh yeah yeah i see and he's like hey are you making that coffee i was like no nope, no more no more of it <laughs> he's like what and then the, the colonel behind me was like hey uh he's blackmailing you sir like uh, i think he wants you to not have those other versions of that report done and he'll, and he'll make you coffee Right. Uh, and sure enough, yeah, that's what I was doing. And he, he thought it was hilarious. And so, you know, coffee saves the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That was, it felt kind of, kind of a waste as a captain going there. Cause I mean, you don't do anything like it's, yeah. if you don't have a bird or higher on your chest, like joint staff is not the place to, to be able to pitch in and help out, make decisions. Sure, so sure. How to learn that pop over to Carson. Uh, that's going to be, end up being my last duty station. Uh, it was great. I ended up putting major on there. Um, again, working with amazing people. Um, this is when, like, I kind of started seeing the, the idea. I was like, I needed to go. But physically, I started to break down a little bit. And then um, someone with the young guys, like, not, nothing really untowards, but just the mentality of, like, kind of what your generation trained my generation just doesn't exist in the younger generation. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's different. Uh, sure. And I was different. So I you know, put a lot of tough love uh, on the guys to NTC. And it, and I guess I shouldn't really consider it a generational thing because like uh, Villa Lobos, right? So he was, he was there with me, you mm -hmm. know, and he was doing some very forward leaning things with his brigade yeah. Um, where I wasn't. And we just had a difference of opinions. That's all. Uh, uh, and we were good friends. It's not like we argued. It's not at all, but sure, sure. like I supported second brigade. I didn't support like this, these new things that the, the army was trying or the air force tech are trying to do. And so he was, he was looking in the future and I was like, Hey, we're going to be the best second brigade. Like my guys can't turn on their trucks and make them operate. All right. You know, we get out to NTC and I've got, you know, battalions calling me up for casts from the brigade just to our initial push. And I'm like, great, I got it. We planned it. Have your JTAC come up on strike. Mm -hmm. And it just wouldn't happen. Oh, you yeah. know, so uh, just little things, right? L learning curves. Um, you know, and I, I would have my guys that were with me. I'm like, hey, once we get up there, like you get up, let me see if there's a problem. You know, there's not. Yeah. You know, so I had to say things like, hey, you know, we can make mistakes as TACP. We definitely can. Uh, but the next time that my TACPs can't talk on strike, when you can see the antenna that you're trying to connect to, like, I'm going to fire you as the Balo. Right. Right. And so some of them really were like, oh, shoot. Like, there's some important things. And other of them, like, it really felt like you were threatening me. I'm like, good, because I was. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> So some guys I but lost. See, the thing about it is, though, like they, they, they take that threat personally. The only reason you're doing that is because you've been in combat and you know the importance of being trained and training appropriately for combat. And they don't see it that way. They're, they're, they, they think it's like they take it a, as a personal attack. And it's like, dude, I'm not I'm not trying to, like, poke you in the eye. I'm just trying to prepare you for combat. Yeah, I was really hoping they would uh, they would get out and just make really, really inappropriate decisions as Balos <laughs> with their JTACs. Like in a good way, though. Like, hey, I'm going to send my JTACs on all these missions. I'm like, yes, yes, yeah. get them killed, whatever. <laughs> I'll go pull them out of, you know, out of the tent myself and put it back in the car. Like, I don't even care. You right, know, right. Thinking, like some of them weren't even able to talk on strike. And that was a little too much for me. Sure. Um, some of them really latched onto it. And I saw some of these guys that like uh, I did a couple NTCs with them. And after that second one, you know, my, you know, I got a senior airman, right? That, I mean, he's just, this kid's a rock star. Just, I love, he, he's like that old crusty tech sergeant back in the, <laughs> back in the late nineties, 2000s. He's just waiting to be that guy yeah, that yeah. knows everything. And so um, he was like the expert romad at NTC because he'd been to so many of them. And then that second time we went, I actually, uh, mid man everywhere. Uh, he was going to be my NCYC of brigade uh, as a new nice. staff, uh, just because he, he had it. Uh, and, um, it wasn't even like the best of a lot of bad situations. It was just like, he was the best of what I had and he was pretty decent. Um, and so he, he would come back and be like, I, I get it. Like, I understand why you would get so mad at us when we didn't fuel up the trucks with gas, when we didn't <laughs> dump off our trash, you know, cause if you didn't throw your trash away, like you're not burying it. Like you're going to drive around with your MRE trash because like you 
weren't doing what you should be in the patrol base, right? So right, right. Uh, he just he ended up soaring a lot of the other guys, and I had some great, you know, some great tech sergeants that I still keep in contact with, and like it's still there. It really is. Uh, it's just, I think we're in a kind of a, an identity crisis right now. And so we really don't know what way we're going to leap. I don't know if you're following um, any of, of kind of what's going on with the career field right now, but uh, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I love the way they're preparing all those guys. I think that the, the standardized training and just everybody's a, you know, just a physical specimen when they come out of training. I, I, I like that aspect of it, but maybe I'm not tracking some other stuff that you're talking about. Yeah. So or... a few years ago, um, Air Force came out and they were going to cut uh, 55% of the budget um, coming yeah. out of the manning uh, of the of the funded positions. So that results in like uh, oh yeah, I did 40 some that, odd yeah. personnel cuts. And so what they're doing is they're trying to survive, you know, these budget cuts. And I don't think it's anything new, um, but they're looking at some additional mission sets that work for uh, outside of the Army, uh, mm. working for the for the Air Force uh, elements, yeah, yeah, or yeah. some communication, some targeting, some you know, some good stuff like that. And I think it's all feasible. They're talking about, uh, you know, super basing again, going to, you know, going to a couple of bases that they're looking at and pulling off the army bases. Right. Um, so there's just like some pros and cons of that. And like, uh, you know, with the standardized training, with all that, like, I'm a little concerned on, you know, what the future holds uh, with like, who who's going to get funded, who's not, what, what can we show is good versus what's going to be glaringly bad. Uh, and what are we risking? What are we not? And like, I really, who, who knows the answers right now, but I think that, sure. you know, we're in a, we're in an identity crisis. Uh, yeah. and, and there's nothing special about that. I think uh, every drawdown, every career field that goes through this is, is kind of in the same thing. So, uh, and that's kind of where we're at right now in TACP. So, yeah, that started before I uh, I uh, left Carson. Um, not a lot of it, but like I'm right in the middle of it all now. So I started uh, kind of falling apart, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would have some weird things happen. Um, and I didn't really think much of it. I thought, oh, I'm just tired. I'm just that. I'm just the other. Um, like at one point, uh, you know, medicine ball, volleyball, right. You know, so, cause I can still, uh, outrun a lot of guys, uh, even as I'm a yeah. fat, um, you know, <laughs> so I'm still in the neck of it with PT with them just having a good time. And like, uh, I couldn't process, um, to make decisions. I could make the initial decision. Um, but if I was wrong, I couldn't change my mind. And so like, sometimes the you know, like medicine ball would fall at my feet and I just didn't know it was my responsibility or I'd run all the way across and, and try to get it when I didn't know, you know, just silly stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, started looking into like, Hey, uh, is this some, you know, is this maybe PTSD related? Is this maybe uh, TBI related? I, I really didn't know. I didn't take it too terribly serious. Um, I started losing my vision a little bit. Oh, I'm getting kind of old, you know, little things. Uh, and then I got ocular auras, which was super weird. Uh, the first one I kind of discarded cause you know, that's what we do, but there's this big blob in my vision and I can't see through it. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, uh, not necessarily safe. And then, uh, my processing really kind of went to shit. So, uh, went in, went through the TBI clinic, trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm on some medication that keeps them from happening, but, uh, that was a pretty big decision on to go ahead and retire versus, uh, I had orders back out to Nellis to be an instructor again. And, you know, uh, family wise, just wasn't a good time to be deploying again. Now my medical stuff, I don't know what's wrong with my brain. I'm now on medication all the time. And uh, tell you the truth, I got a little bored and I didn't want to spend the next 12 years in the military, yeah. which kind of is what it was looking like was going to need to happen if I would have stayed in. And so went ahead and retired. Um, the day of my retirement was Friday, May 16th, went through my retirement, came back to my house, had a big house full of people. My phone rang. It was Pratt and Whitney offering me a job. Nice. So the day of my retirement. So that was pretty good. Um, which put me back down in Columbus, which I knew that there was a going to be a job opening up, um, a GS job. Uh, and I'd met the guy before and I'd kept in contact with this guy for like five years. And so I went oh, out to nice. Pratt. It was a great career. I mean, you know, I could live forever down there. You know, it was, it was a good enough of a job. Like it was a forever job, right? I pick up mm -hmm. my family, <laughs> move them to Columbus, Georgia, which is great. Um, <laughs> you know, get out in Harris County though. Uh, and it, you know, if I, if I wasn't able to get this dream job that I've been looking at for like six years at this point, um, you know, I still have a great career and Pratt and Winnie was good for that. You know, they have great benefits and I did that. And then, um, that guy retired a few months later. So I think I worked for Pratt for about eight months before I went and popped over to the GS job I have. So I'm basically working for the Joint Integration Division at, uh, out of the LeMay Center. Okay. So uh, El Cid, Matt Nunswander is the director. He's up at Leavenworth. He's got a deputy. We got a guy out at uh, Fort Sill, got myself here. Um, and we teach the captains uh, all their courses, the integration stuff, and then we review doctrine and stuff. So it's almost exactly like I was, uh, I'd spent 20 years to do. So um, nice. Slid into that. I'm one deep position here. You know, my boss is in Kansas. I'm, I'm it. Uh, and I'm loving it. So uh, 
yeah, that, that brings us up to the current, like where we're at. Yeah. It's nice to have that, uh, that kind of stability, like right when you get out, you know, you don't have to like, cause I know a lot of guys will, they'll just try to find something until either that retirement check kicks in or, you know, the, the next job comes up. But, and, um, did you do any of that, the, um, any kind of transition at all? Did you? Uh, so, uh, you know, VC, like, what do they call that? The, the um, yeah, taps. T- well, it's that it's that program where you're still in the military, but you can. Oh yeah, yeah. I took a full advantage of that. So okay. um, I had a pretty good program lined up, but then I was only going to be doing it for about ten weeks before I went on like 112 days of terminal leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I started my job. Um, like there, Villa Lobos and I went through a lot of this together, and then like it's oh, the whole initiative he's doing, and uh, it's all good stuff. Um, and there's there is there's a ton of stuff to learn. I mean, as you know, it's, when you transition, it's like oh crap, I wish I would have known. Yeah. So uh, you know, after listening to his stuff, I got to reach back out and see see what I can do to help and like all that good stuff. So oh, okay, well, cool, man. When I read through this, I knew it was going to be awesome. Uh, I because like I said, there was a lot of things that we talked about it before. There's things that you don't you work with a guy for you know, years and years and we go off and do our own thing. And then we come back, we don't, we kind of just BS and yeah. tell mom jokes and we don't really get like, dig into the, you know, <laughs> yeah. we don't dig into the, the yeah, details. And yeah, it's just amazing how much you miss when you don't, you know, interact with the guy. So I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here and oh. sharing. I mean, it really, not only are they good stories, but you know, you're a good buddy of mine and it, it's, it's nice to fill in those gaps of what I missed, you know? So that's, yeah, I, I mean, it. it's definitely my honor to be on here and, you know, I think take up like over almost three hours of your time now, but I think the best part of this is I just, I get to listen to like, uh, you know, when you get, you know, when you get your crew on there, I get to hear your stories too, but I get to hear all their stories and it's like, man, I had no idea like that, uh, that we're all so, so similar. Um, yeah. Right. So it's, it's just fascinating. So I know. <laughs> it really is. Well, all right, man. I appreciate it. You, is there anything else you want to talk about? Any kind of like initiatives or, I mean, uh, uh, any kind of charities or um, can I plug your, you know, I guess the little May Center doesn't really need any plugs, but uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you Honor know, I hear all that. I think, you know, uh, you know, I get excited to hear everybody else's. I don't, I don't really get involved. I'm, I'm kind of solo down here, so I get to, I get to see it. Uh, so I got I to gotta reach out to some of their stuff. But sure, you know, sure. I think those charities, they kind of go in, you know, what touches you um, throughout your life. And like, uh, you know, I had all those problems with like, uh, with my wife and trying to have kids and stuff. And they're like the Ronald Ronald McDonald house was there for us. Uh, and so we utilized it so much. And like every year that's where, that's where a bulk of our charity goes is to them. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I learned that, like, I mean, we got the Techby association, we got all that stuff. It's all good. Uh, yeah. Have you sought any, um, uh, any, help for any TBI or any kind of PTSD or anything? Yeah. Or do you- yeah so, uh, there before I retired, I went through, uh, yeah, I guess let me plug that. I mean, guys, guys have to reach out. Um, it's not the same world that like you guys may have grown up in. Like, uh, I've luckily had the clout and some of the rank that when I had my troubles, I'm like, nobody's going to stop me. And if you're in trouble, you come find me and we will sure. get you the help you need. So I have no problem just raising my hand saying, Hey, uh, I'm going to counseling. Uh, I'm going to the TBI clinic. Uh, I'm doing all these things because I'm kind of in a bad shape right now. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, if guys are listening to this and they're still active duty, like, don't let anything stop you reaching out and, uh, you know, fight for yourself if, if you've got a problem with it. I mean, uh, I've luckily, uh, I've always had great people around me. I mean, I don't, I don't need to stand up and say, hey, go get help because I'm doing it when I got guys like Tommy Case there who's he's taking care of people. Like, <laughs> So, you know, when sure, Tommy says, exactly. yeah, you're going to get help and we're going to support you. I'm like, oh, what can I say? Like, <laughs> right exactly yeah, yeah i second that so uh, <laughs> that's right yeah right. yeah um yeah so i reached out i got help and I, you know I'm, I'm on medicine every day now just so i can you know stay in reality <laughs> so, it works well uh so yeah well good. good good i'm glad uh i mean because it you know it's a thing that we don't often like you mentioned ptsd and you're like you wonder if it was if it was that i mean sometimes what you do you know you kind of laugh about it now or but these things we go through especially the things that you've gone through just in this last, you know, couple of hours, we've been talking about it, those incidences and those, uh, you know, those missions that you went on, we don't realize the kind of effect it has on us. You know, yeah. it's, it, it kind of, it's in the back of our head and I'm just glad that, you know, you're, you're getting the help you need. And, but not, not to say that you needed it or not oh, to say no, you I definitely a hard time. It, but... and, I'm, and I was so blessed to be able to get it when I got it. I mean, both for my yeah. anger issues and, you know, uh, there's probably some PTSD in there. I don't know. Or I'm just a jerk, one of the two. Either way, I got help <laughs> for it. So, uh, you know, and then the, then, then the full medical stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge advocate for people getting all that. And I think our career field is so much far further, further than what it was. Oh, for sure. Um, I mean, hiring people, hiring psychologists in the squadron. That's amazing. So Yeah. Yeah, not only mental but physical. The whole, yeah. the whole everything. It's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I can't imagine how many needles I had stuck in my body there before I left. I mean, I was getting free <laughs> therapy for just every day. It was awesome. Right. 
All right, man. Well, again, this has been great. I can't thank you enough for coming on. This was awesome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm so happy that, you know, you uh, were able to, you know, do even greater things than you did when, when I knew you. And I mean, I'm really, it's really awesome. I'm really glad to hear, you know, what you've done. And yeah, I appreciate it. Awesome. it. It was really good to connect. So thanks again for reaching out. You know, I had a ball. Uh, yeah, I, man. I listened to all your stuff. So, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but <laughs> they're great. So <laughs> thank you for doing well, good. this. Well, good. Appreciate it. Yeah. So. All right, all right, man. Yep. Take care. Hey!